Good, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome out to Fort Zumwalt West High School for today's championship game of the 2024 Midwest Classic. We have the Fort Zumwalt West Jaguars as the home team and the CBC Cadets as the visitors. And uh, we, I think we got a dandy for you here, folks. Uh, we got a chance to go through some history. This is the 27th edition of the Midwest Classic, hosted by Coach Tony Perkins and Francis Howell. Um, in uh, 20, let's we're going to take a look at the history of these two teams here, and we're going to start with uh, the CBC Cadets, the MCC uh, conf or the Metro Catholic Conference. There it is. They are eight and three this year with losses to Jackson and Francis Howell. They're a seven-time participant in this uh, Midwest Classic. They won this tournament in 2015. By the way, I, I, I mentioned this. We're going to see this with Coach Horn. We mentioned that the year they won this tournament, they won the state championship. Coach Horn didn't want none to do with that. So we're going to roll the tape with Coach Horn here and uh, appreciate him taking time to talk with us. Hey, we're here with uh, head coach of CBC, Mason Horn. Coach, thanks for taking a minute. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Uh, Midwest Classic Championship. This is the 27th edition of the, the Classic. I just found that out myself today. Uh, you guys won this in 2015. Yes. Oddly enough, you won the state championship that oh, year, Coach. Let's, let's don't go there. Yet. That's <laughs> way too early for that. <laughs> I had to I do, do that. that. I had to yeah. do that. Because it was. I saw that. I was like, oh, I'm going to hit Coach Horn with that. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, way too early for that for sure. <laughs> You guys are off to a good start. What's been the keys here? Uh, really good defense and uh, just some execution offensively. You know, getting bunts down, taking the extra bases. We're getting some timely hitting. So, uh, and we're pitching it okay. So, uh, kind of the uh, classic hallmarks of winning baseball, right? Yeah, absolutely. You have Cameron uh, Fuqua, correct? Fuqua, yes. Fuqua, yes. excuse me, on the, on the mound today. What do you expect from him? Uh, strike thrower, uh, some downward movement, some good arm side run. So I, I hope that our infielders are getting a lot of work. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he just fills it up. So, um, you know, he's he's done his job so far. So we're going to give him the ball today and see what happens. You know, you guys play on grass field today. We're on a skin field here. What's the difference with the defense, and how do you get your guys to adjust to those things? Well, I, depending on the skin and, yeah. and the moisture levels and everything, not to get too tacky here, but uh, – <laughs> You know, it's it's obviously a faster playing surface, um, and then again, depending on how how hard or soft or whatever it is, uh, so there's a little bit of an adjustment there. But to be brutally honest, uh, almost every grass field we've played on so far this year has been pretty dry and fast, <laughs> especially at our place. So I, I don't think it's going to be too much of a difference. Uh, uh, we've been playing on turf and and dry fields so far this year, believe it or not. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference. Very good. Offensively, you guys have, over the last five games, put up some uh, big runs. Um, do you see that happening? And who's who's been the guys? Where's your catalyst in that? Yeah, uh, Tyler Ellis has, has really gotten off to a great start, uh, uh, you know, hitting a lot of extra base hits, um, getting good, good, solid, hard contact pretty consistently. Derek Pitts is coming on here at the end of the tournament. Uh, Jake McGee's had a couple really big games where he's driven the ball. But uh, so I expect, uh, you know, Hopefully those guys continue to do what they do. And then as you know, you get into these games, hey, it's it's going to be somebody that you're not expecting, right, for them right. to do something. And, and you need that guy to do something in a championship game. So we'll see. I like this. And last thing I'll get you out of here, championship games. I know it's early in the season, but – these are always learning moments for kids when you get in these situations, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, we're all preparing for the end of the year, right? right? So even though we're in week whatever it is, three or whatever, um, it's still the mentality of, all right, you know, there's no tomorrow, right? This, right. It's, it's win today or go home. And that's kind of how we're coming into this game is as if it's the end of the year and, and we're going to do everything we can to try to beat a really good team at, at their place. There you go. Hey, head coach Mason Horn from CBC Coach. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you for you. your Thanks time. Thanks for everything you good do. Good luck. Appreciate it. Appreciate Coach Horn taking the time to chat with us today. And up next, the Fort Zumwalt West Jaguars. Uh, they're 15 time participants in this Midwest Classic. They're part of the GAC South. They're 9 and 2 this year. They won the Troy 
uh, Classic over Francis Howell four to three, so they got that in there. But in this Midwest Classic, they've won in 2009. Uh, back-to-back back in 21 and 22, and here they are again, the championship game in 24. We got a chance to talk with Coach Goff, so uh, Drew, let's roll it. Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, <laughs> we'll get you going. We're rolling. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. Hey, folks, we're here at uh, Zumwalt West Midwest Classic. This guy right here, this guy. Anthony Weber, Weiber. I said that. It's okay. And I know DJ better. My own wedding got it wrong too. Did so, it? Yeah. Uh, this young man right here, he was the, the JV coach at East with my son playing. Uh, my son was Justin was he was you were always his favorite man. I, I'm going to say that. No offense to Coach Hill. He's our coach favorite Robinson. here too. Yeah, right. But uh, he's now the athletic director here at uh, Fort Zumwalt West and doing a great job. Yeah, I just you. wanted to recognize. Buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you don't get no love, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff yeah, right there. You only notice them when they do something wrong. That's right. And we never notice them. <laughs> so, uh, but now we have uh, head coach Eric Goff of the Fort Zumwalt West Jaguars. Coach, um, you've got a pretty good history with the Midwest Classic. Yeah, we've uh, had a good, have good, good run lately. You you won in 22 and uh, 21. Yep. And here you are back in the championship game. Uh, this is a, this is a good test for you guys early, isn't it? Oh, for sure. That's we we build our schedules like so many teams in the area. We play, you know, the, the Detroit tournament is one of the best ones in the state. Play the Midwest Classic early uh, because you know you're going to get tested early. Um, it's it's not uh, it's not really going to benefit you early in the season if you don't challenge yourself by playing some tough opponents. Yeah. And that's what this tournament's all about. Um, you know, if you heck early on, you know, as a head coach. You know, it, it, I learned real quick that if, if you're three and two in the Midwest Classic, you, you probably had you had to play some good baseball at some point <laughs> right. just to get to three and two. And if you can come out of the Midwest Classic at four and one, or you can win the dang thing at five and zero, oh, then then you've been battle tested and got through some tough spots, and your kids have learned and grown, and and uh, they're they're making that step towards getting ready to compete for a conference title and compete for a district championship. So it's a, it's a good test early, and you find out a lot about your guys. You know, you give. Give those young guys a chance to go out and compete at the varsity level, so they kind of get the chance to grow up. Um, and it's fun to see them have that opportunity and to see them see them do it. Coach just rode in on his tractor. He's out here working, so we haven't seen his lineup yet. So I got to know who's on the bump for you. Blake Hill's on the bump today. Blake Hill, what are you looking for? Uh, we're just to keep the same recipe that you know our, our big dogs have done. Um, you know, our, we got throw strikes and put it on the ground. Yeah, Those guys are them, feeling like crazy. Yeah, make them, make them, uh, make them beat us. Um, yeah. And that's we got our three seniors right now: Tanner Sullivan, Jeter Roop, and uh, Cole Harris, that have just done such a great job of competing on the bump um, and battling through counts when they're behind and battling through situations. And when we got guys in scoring position with less than two out, they just keep on. Keep on competing and trying to win the next pitch. Fill up the zone and make them beat us. Um, and then it was really great what, yesterday watching Carter Perry grow up a little bit yesterday. Yeah, he had yeah, a really good outing. It was his, his best varsity outing uh, so far. And um, he, he, he grew up a little bit and gained a little confidence because he's just following that recipe of, of those, uh, those kind of those three senior dogs who are going out and doing it. So that's what we're looking at for Blake today. You know, he's, he's seen it work and say, hey, you go pound the zone, you challenge hitters, make them put it in play, trust the guys behind you. And uh, trust, you know, trust your teammates to get the job done because we trust in you. As long as you go pound the zone and you challenge hitters, you're probably going to be okay today. Yeah. Your offense, been doing well, scoring enough runs. What do you expect out of your offense? Today? Well, we've been scratching a little bit, scratching yeah. and call a little bit. We've been, uh, I think we had some guys pressing a little bit early, which is not uncommon this time of year. And it, as you look across teams in the state, it seems like there's a lot of guys that say, yeah. man, we're struggling offensively. We just yeah. can't find it right now. And, like, and that's part of the reasons we've, we've played a lot of low scoring ball games. You know, yeah. it's, uh, heck, we, you know, in, in the Troy tournament, we beat Jackson four to two. We beat Howell four to three. Just, just good, cl just good, clean, competitive high school baseball games. And then Viani, we got them one to nothing. And, Heck, Lindbergh, Lindbergh was a one nothing ball game going into the into the sixth or seventh inning, and um, and there's just a lot of teams that really haven't found it offensively yet. But that also speaks to how good the pitchers are doing. That's um, right. So um, the pitching in the area has been a little bit better than, than maybe I expected this year. That some guys have really stepped up into that role and and are proving that they're going to be guys that are tough to beat. And that's that's the other beautiful thing about these tournaments and and kind of being where we are as a program, we feel like we're going to get we're going to get team's best shots. Um, Absolutely. And particularly early in the week when you're playing a Lindbergh and a Zumalt South and a Viani, you're going to see quality arms. 
um, which is good for us because those are the kind of guys you got to beat if you're going to go win a conference title and win a district title, and that's the ultimate goal. So, Absolutely. Folks, head coach Eric Goff, Fort Zumwalt West coach. Always a Thanks pleasure. Thanks for time. coming out. Thanks for the pleasure. Absolutely. You guys do a great job, always, and we appreciate the heck out of you. coming out here. Yep. Thanks a bunch. Absolutely. I'm joined here by my broadcast partner, Mitch the Kid. How you doing, sir? The hitting zone. Yes, sir. Mitch, uh, these two teams, how they got here, let's start with the uh, visiting CBC cadets. Uh, they beat Timberland 10-6, Parkway West 7-2, Howe Central 10-6, and then uh, Rockwood Summit, who was undefeated up to that point, eight to three. Uh, this team's been putting up some runs. Heck yeah! Uh, just looking at kind of some of their stats going into this game, uh, the extra base hits. Uh, we talk about that all the time. Uh, you know that slugging. So um, looking down the list of doubles, triples, dingers, um, they can do it. Absolutely, and they're getting pitching. Oh yeah. You know, the, the, this is a young team. They lost a lot last year, so it's really interesting to see. I love this young man. Uh, uh, Derek Pitts in center field. They got Jake McGee there in the middle of that lineup with those two guys, uh, Logan Winkleman, Tyler Ellis. Uh, Coach Horn talked about uh, Ellis being the, the, the catalyst of this offense so far. Uh, yeah, looking at, I mean, he's in the sixth spot too, you know, so uh, it just goes to show with the, uh, you know, the numbers of these plate appearances and then the RBI totals. There's a bunch of kids with, um, you know, four or five RBIs uh, plus on the season, and that's like down the lineup with ten guys. Absolutely, that's pretty deep hitting lineup. Absolutely, uh, Fort Zumwalt West. How they got here? Uh, they beat Lindbergh nine one. Fort Zumwalt South seven to nothing. A walk off win against Viani one nothing. Viani's had some hard luck wins may, or losses so far this year, and then they beat Lafayette eight to two to get to this championship game. Again, this team, they're, they're, they are built on pitching and defense. Coach Goff, every year, that is a staple of this team. They got guys that just play their, their grinders. They just don't – you've got to beat Ford Zumo West. You have to. And, and obviously, you know, being part of the GACs and, and the, you know, some of the games of the week that we'll see here coming up, um, it's going to be them and Howland GACs, and they're showing it early season with the pitching and the defensive side of things. You know, their their top of the lineup is 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 hitting. Um, right. The rest of the guys, yeah, you know, they're chipping in, uh, getting on base, and and uh, allowing those guys at the top of the lineup to hit. But you know, Viani, uh, what a heck of a ball game! They they pitch it very well um, and play defense very well. Obviously, a one nothing ball game. So. Um, I, I this is again uh, you know we just had some uh, St. Charles West in Winfield uh, we were thinking that was going to be a three to two ball game right. I'm expecting that similar because you got two uh, great arms on the mound but offensively uh, both teams are scoring runs so um, it's a Saturday great day 75 degrees and sunny absolutely and you know when we're talking about uh, these two teams I think it's going to be a lot of fun we're going to see uh, these are I guess I don't know, blue bloods, so to speak. I don't know, man. What that's that's what I would go with. <laughs> the the uh, blue bloods, blue chips. Um, they are definitely. This reminds me of like your your Michigan states. You know, Michigan <laughs> uh, kind of rivalries of the, the you know it's March Madness, right? So now you didn't know. hit the you didn't hear this earlier. I, I hit Coach Horn with this uh, in 2015 when they won the state championship. CBC won the Midwest Classic. All right. Coach Horn did not want nothing to do with that. But I can't help it, man. You just got to the, – the similarities here, you know, it'll be <laughs> – I, I am actually impressed with the uh, – that you could you went back and got stats from 25-15. Hey, look, we got the – we got this. We'll come back playing in the national anthem. We'll be right back, folks.
let's get to the starting lineups for this CBC squad. Mitch's uh, papers are blowing everywhere. We got a little windage here. Yeah, wind's always blowing out. Remember that. But uh, we got uh, leading off playing left field, number five, Wade Hunter, in the two hole, playing shortstop, number 14, Bryce Edmonston. In the three hole, playing center field, number three, Derek Pitts, playing first base in the four hole, number four, excuse me, number one. That is number one, Jake McGee. In the five hole, playing behind the plate, excuse me, I should say, behind the plate, Logan Winkleman, number 12. In the six hole, the DH, Tyler Ellis, number 15. Playing third base, number six, Anthony Toko. And in the eight hole, playing second base, GT Taylor. In the nine hole, playing right field, Nick Rollo. And on the mound for CBC will be Cameron Fu Fuque. And uh, that's uh, our CBC lineup. We'll get to West here. Defensively, West on the mound, you have Blake Keel. Behind the plate, Kyle, uh, I believe that's Feisty, is the way it's pronounced. At third base, Nicolagna. At second base, Carter Perry, shortstop, Nolan Sissom. At first base, Landon Young. In right field, Michael Wolf. In left field, Brent Deverman. And uh, patrolling center field back is Nolan Whiteside. All right, Mitch, we got first pitch coming up here, leading off uh, Hunter Wade. What's he hitting right now on the season there, Mitch? Uh, this young man's got a 471 uh, average and on-base percentage of 500. So, Table setter for CBC. All right, here we go. First pitch, 11 a.m. And, uh, well, it's gone the wrong direction there. Got to hold on to that baseball. Here we go. Wind's blowing out. <laughs> the wind is blowing right to left here, but the big fence over there and the wide strike zone. So one and one here to Wade to start this game. Two and one. Three and one now to Hunter. A little inauspicious start. He's picking that outside corner pretty good here. And he misses up for a walk to start this inning. It's tough to start the game off with a strike, then four straight balls. Uh, this is an opportunity right now for CBC to uh, make some things happen, see if we're going to see some bunt and runs or some movement. A young pitcher, you know, pitching in a big game. I think I, I, this is always something I think is great to see early in the season here, Mitch. Yeah, the young man's got four innings pitched uh, to this point in the year, you know, so this is an opportunity for this young man to show that he belongs on this staff. So uh, I'm sure nerves are part of it. It's a little overthrown a little bit. 1-0 and oh here to the second hole hitter, Bryce Edmonston. One and one now. And a ground ball to Sissom. Oh, and that caught him on that short hop. And over his head for an error early in this game. You don't see that. You just don't see that that often. 
Uh, these are, you see, there's some of the issues, you know, playing on skin fields. Uh, you have to make decisions on hops, you know, you, whether or not you're going to go get it or sit back. That was in between on him. He stayed a little too deep. He should have come through that a little bit more and, uh, you know, flipped it to first base if he had to move instead of trying to turn two. So, no outs. Derek Pitts now squares and bunts it down the first base line. Keel over, makes the play for out number one, but that's a great bunt there by Pitts to move the guys into scoring position there, Mitch. Good um, sack bunt. <laughs> I'm going to go on a limit. I, I didn't expect that. I thought when he was showing, he was just trying to see if maybe Ford Zomal West was kind of showing some hands there. This is a young man that's hitting 370 on a year and he's got five extra base hits, you know, second to the team in RBIs, and he's your three-hole bunting. When I was talking with Coach Horn before the game, he, that's what he talked about. He said, we're doing the little things. We're, we're, we're playing a little bit different. Now, but here's a guy that you're going to let swing away, and uh, McGee can hurt you. Yep, again, and just another one of those kids on this on this team that's got himself a dinger on the year uh, and then extra base hits, and CBC's back at it again after breaking some records last year uh, with the extra base hits, home run totals. McGee's quickly 0-2. That's a good take. Right. Pitcher's got to back that up, though. I don't think he can throw a fastball, don't get predictable. So I would probably go back to it or fastball up and in. 0-2 to McGee. Curveball. Line drive caught by Landon Young at first base. So after the walk in the air, it's quickly two outs with two uh, with two runners on, and we're we've got uh, Logan Winkleman up. So CBC trying to scratch here. Ground ball to Alagna comes up, strong throw, and gets the out. So Keel, with the early air, pitches around the air and the walk, and we go to the bottom of the first inning with the score 0-0. Zero, zero. What better feeling than watching your son or daughter pitch their best game, catch the game winning out, or crush a stand-up double? That comes with talent, long hours of hard work that got them there. That's exactly where Legacy Performance Academy comes in, matching the hours of work, drive, and dedication to help your athlete build a legacy that lasts. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346 and find them located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. All I have to say is wow there. Uh, Ford Zomo West starting pitcher, Walks the leadoff hitter. We have an error to back it up, and then comes out and gets three outs and basically five pitches. Um, and that's with the heart of their lineup for CBC. Young men that have got like 15 extra base hits there uh, on the season. And um, he goes out and gets himself out of that jam. That's a heck of a job by a young man that's got four innings pitched on the season um, and showed some uh, intestinal fortitude there, if you will, showed some guts. Uh, to, to get himself out of that inning. So, um, heck of a job by Fort Zumwalt West. Now let's see if they carry that momentum now offensively. Well, we're going to see, I, I love that, we're going to see Nick Alagna. He's at the top of this lineup. Here's the lineup for Fort Zumwalt West. Leading off, number four, Nick Alagna. Number six, Brent Deverman. Number nine, Nolan System. Number 11, Jack Hartnagel. Number 21, Landon Young. And in the six hole, Carter Perry, number one. In the seven hole, number 34, Nolan Whiteside. Uh, in the eight hole, number seven, Kyle Feisty. And in the nine hole, number three, Michael Wolf. So these teams are pretty similar. They're going to scratch runs. They're, you know, there's extra base hits to be had, but for the most part, Mitch, they will small ball you too. Yeah, look at, just looking at kind of Ford's Amalt West is, uh, you know, stats on the year. They have a lot of young men that is, have double-digit plate appearances. So, um, you know, big roster, but they all have experience. So that could come and play late in the game. On the mound, Cameron Fuquay. 
Ball one to Alagna. One and one now. I think both teams can live there on that outside corner Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Absolutely, Mitch. Yeah, how consistent can you be on that pitch? Yep, and then you're and then to be able to throw your breaking pitches off that, it's going to go in the pitcher's favor. There it is again. Now, if he could, like you said right there, one and two now to Alagna. It won't take long to expand that zone. We'll this, get the white of the left-handed batter's box very soon. This is where you see if young pitchers can make a pitch with a two-strike count curveball. Ah, that's, that's a good pitch. Yep. Liked it. Two like and two. Sequencing. I, I think the uh, young man behind the dish has a uh, earpiece in, so I think he's getting some help from his his uh, coach, his pitching coach, maybe. Technology, yeah. baby. Looks like the Secret Service. Oh, there it is. Those free bases. It's so one thing that you, you like to avoid. We yeah. saw that Tuesday that how bad the, the free base led to big innings, and you, you want to try to avoid those uh, crooked numbers. Yeah, Winfield had, what, uh, three hit by pitch, and I think it was five or six base on balls. It's tough to overcome. Yep. Brent Deverman, the younger brother of the aforementioned Kenton Deverman, for, is now at Evansville pitching well. Oh, that's a good swing right there. I was, ex I was expecting early that uh, Coach Goff would bunt. Uh, maybe he's giving him one because he's obviously one of their top hitters right now. Uh, well, guy's getting on base, I guess. He's yeah. hitting 231, so, um, but he serves a purpose in this two spot. You never know what is that, you know, if he's hitting sharp ground balls or fly balls, line drives, and just hitting into tough breaks. Alagna away. That's a good lead over there by Nick Alagna. It's going to make you think about him. There he goes, a throw over. That's a quick, ooh, that was close, Mitch. Yeah, I, I like the uh, play all around. Everybody tried to sell it. Pitcher, catcher, our pitcher, first baseman, and then the um, the umpire uh, sold it real well. Oh, what's this? It's either a balk or it's not. Call a balk or don't, but get behind the plate. Then call a balk. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> He's back in. Another throw over. So this is the, the experience of an Alagna, the senior, and he is a threat to run. And so now the extra pressure of these pitches, Mitch, One and one now. That young to man Deverman. Is, is confident in his leadoff. The pitcher's got a great move over there too. That speed kills, don't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> it's something I didn't have. Woo! Another one. That's a good lead. He's just getting back under that tag. It's all that matters. Keep throwing over there, might throw the ball away or start focusing on him, lose focus on the hitter, might walk him too, and you don't want to bring up Nolan Sisson. I like the cat and mouse here, Mitch. And there is a base hit by Deverman into right field. Alagna on his way to third. And we've got first and third with no outs, and uh, the big-time hitter here, Nolan Sisson, coming to the plate. That's good baseball. That's a nice little piece. Didn't try to do too much with that. Even with a strike on him. I mean, you know, it was at, what, 2-1 the count was. And then, right. you know, he was able to just as take what he was given, which is a nice little single, not try to roll that baseball over. That's probably why he's hitting in the two spot. That is, yeah, exactly. Because he's going he's gonna to be able to move runners over. And that is a swing that can move a runner over. And obviously moved him two bags going first to third there. The ball hits the right field. So we're in the same spot. Two runners on, no outs, as Keel faced in the top of the first inning. Now we'll see what uh, Fu Kui does here. He throws a strike. Right, 
Both teams have played a lot of games uh, up until this point this year, and um, you know both both arms. Uh, both teams have played eleven games. They're in game twelve already of this yeah, year. Yeah, and there, there's there's not a lot of innings by either pitcher. Um, uh, Fuqua here has six on the year, and Peel or Keel has four. So um, I don't, you know, that's a lot of innings played, and so these both these young men are kind of what they have left. Gets a sign. Ball's in the dirt, and Deverman is into second. Easy on the spike. Here we go. I think that's the most important pitch in baseball right here. 1-1, one, one, 2 on. Second and third now. So definite two RBI situation here for Sissom. This next pitch is the biggest difference in, in stat-wise between being 2-1 and 1-2. One and one and has, has the largest gap. Uh, and averages, if you will. So if a you know, kid goes two and one, he's going to hit 370. If a kid goes one and, you know, one and two, he's hitting 170. It's a 200 point difference. And we are two and one, so we're in that 300 point difference here. Yeah. Mitch. Here we go. Cheating dead red. Curveball. That's a good pitch. He didn't back away from that. That's nope, a good off-speed. Heck, yeah, a lot of guts, right? I mean, I, I like I liked every piece of that. Nolan tried to destroy that thing. <laughs> two and two. Yes, he did. He still come out of his shoes there. Got time called. Three two now to Sissom. He's the only double digit uh, RBI guy um, in this game, so it's a huge opportunity for him. Three two, and Nolan Sissom. Oh, spoiled that pitch, and that was a pretty good breaking ball, Mitch. That was a good breaking ball. I think if I'm the if I'm the arm right now and and. Uh, if I'm Fuqua, I'm probably going back to that pitch. I, yeah. I, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to um, you know, as a hitter, I, I'm trying to, my building my approach on that is he ain't going to throw that pitch again. He's going to throw a heater so I can sit on it. Steps off. And I think they're going to challenge him in. It looks like the, unless he's showcasing something different, but it looks like they're going to challenge him in, so I'm guessing heater. They changed it. Another curveball. Oh, wow. That's that's what makes, I think, great hitters right there. Even in high school, you see that. He he, read, he saw that curveball. Didn't try and do too much. I'm just trying to get it over the third baseman's head. Yeah, he's sitting fastball and just kind of adjusting again. Like that's that's the thing is I think that was the right pitch selection call for CBC. Uh, I love that, that, that approach there by the pitching catching, uh, you know, the coaching staff. Because now he doesn't exactly know, so you kind of get back in your favor. Another fastball up and spoiled. So Sissom putting together a good at bat here. It's a quab, baby. A good old quality AB. I love the quabs. Yeah, I call them quabs. You call them Quab, quabs? Quab. I got you. That's a short A or a long A. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that smart, Brian. Ball Change four, up. good. I, oh, that's that's a big league take right there, Mitch. He wasn't going to do nothing with it anyways. That was a really good pitch. He could have probably thrown that 3-2 and got him. So we have the bases loaded now. No outs. And Jack Hartnagel stepping to the plate as the DH. What do we got for Hartnagel here? Uh, well, he's another one of those young men that uh, has got a high average for them. He's... Um, it's interesting. He's hitting in this part of the lineup with only 12 plate appearances on the season. So, a lot of a lot of trust by Coach Goff here. But he's got five RBI. We were talking before time. they were they. I didn't get their lineup till late because Coach was going through. They they were out hitting early, and they were looking at who was going to be in the middle of this lineup here. Five, six, seven, or I think it was yes, or four. Excuse me, four, five, six. He said we we hadn't made a decision. So, here you have Hartnagel. Coach, they they made decision after BP, and here we see it. 
Yeah, and you could you you can see the why some of these young kids are hitting you know in the 250 marks uh, on base percentages seem pretty solid in the mid threes, but. Um, again, you just never know when you're coming out and watch. You know, you see a kid hitting 250. Is that a loud 250 or is that a, you know, is that right. a weak 250? Right. And there's a big difference. So he's now 2-0 and to Hartnagel. It's a tough spot here, Mitch. And right now, Fuque is struggling on the mound. Yeah, I'm shocked uh, we didn't see a mound visit after the walk to Sissom. Uh, or even, you know, catcher going out, kind of uh, trying to make sure he's settled down. Uh, he's got that energy in the right spot. Um, you know, looking looking at this young man on the mound, he doesn't have, I mean, he's got six innings pitched. Um, and, you know, he's, he's given up one unearned run uh, in, in, in that three games. And it's his first start of the year. But, again, just one run allowed in six innings is, is solid. There's a... There you go. Challenge with the fastball. Got that. Followed that up with another strike. This is where you want to see it. 3-2. He'd gotten behind. He's thrown two quality pitches here. Got back in the count. Can he follow it up? I hope he throws a heater, which, you know, this is tough for him because obviously the hitter's probably sitting same thing. Oh, that's a great pitch, Mitch. That's a great pitch on the outer half. Hey, we told you, we said it early. That you're going to be able to extend on that, on that plate quick with this umpire behind the dish. He likes that side of the plate. He always has like that side of the plate. Yep. And he's shown the ability. All the all that both catchers need to do is continue just to expand that outside corner to right-handed hitters. So the first out of the uh, first inning, and it's ball one now to Landon Young, number 21, the first baseman. Here we go with, with Landon Young on the season. He's hitting only 200, but he's got that on base percentage of 355, and he's got regular plate appearances and, um, you know, has his uh, RBI opportunities, and he's taking advantage of it. Got that pitching mound visit now. Yeah. You know, he just missed on that, that slider that he threw first pitch to this to, to Landon, and uh, I thought, man, he probably should have stuck to the heater. You had the heater. You threw three of them in a row right there. I, I think maybe it would have been a good call to kind of change the pace of it. Yeah. Uh, but when you're feeling, you know, you, you got you to gotta stay consistent with uh, what got you that out there in a big situation. Because he still haven't given up a run yet, right? Nope. So We want to thank our uh, sponsor, Legacy Performance Academy, for their work with us and their partnership. Folks. If you're looking for some performance, <laughs> right? Yep. Go to stllpa.com. And check out, oh, that's right, Mitch. We got a new fancy scoreboard. Uh, Drew got that up going for us. We got a new fancy scoreboard there. It's all cool looking. You're going to have to check it out. Oh, no. Get <laughs> He's showing him. <laughs> He's working it, baby. Yeah, we had a break. We're up. We're we're upgrading, man. I like that. All right, here we are, two and zero. Oh, after the mound visit, and oh, a yeah, swing and a miss. There it is. Every every bit of that was great by the hitter, by the by the pitching staff. Usually, when you come out of those mound visits, you expect fastball. I love that challenge. Here you go. See yeah. what you can do. See if you can hit it. Go ahead. Another fastball, ground ball to the third baseman. Oh, and it gets through. And it's going to score two as Sissom goes into third. I was blocked. And what do we got here? We got a call here. We might have some interference. What do we got? What did you see there, Mitch? I missed the play. Did it go under him or what? I couldn't see. I got blocked. The the fan the fan said that there was a little bit of uh, uh, the base runner maybe base from runner interference. Third, yeah, hit him. That's what the fans are saying. I couldn't see. He got the runner getting in it's my actually, way. Actually, uh, obstruction. 
So we'll see if there's an obstruction call and being able to field that baseball. So I like this right here. This is good umpiring right here. Talk Both about guys it. talking about it. Make sure we get the call right. That's good oh stuff. God. Yeah, my, my guess is they're going to f- trying to figure out where everybody's going to go, right? So the, the runner that was at third base scores, the runner from second to third uh, is, should be out. Yep. Uh, I think if this is if, not going to go in Coach Horn's favor from what it looked like. Coach Horn got about his head when he come out. We'll see. Looks like nobody's staying. They didn't make a call, so it looks like we're going to stay with the current situation here. Because when out the catcher it. stood up, I got blocked. I didn't see the play. So Yeah, and I got the runner was in front of me to see that ball in the gap, and the, the catcher so, had stepped up. Are we calling this a single? Uh, I'm going to have to because <laughs> I can't can't go any other way here, Mitch. Uh, if you're asking me. Uh, the, uh, on, So he's safe. Yeah. No, no obstruction there. So we got another. Now, see, that's where Gonzo's experience takes over. I like that because he's a he is a. He is a he's uh, a veteran veteran official. <laughs> no, hang on, guys. You get back. I'm talking to him. That's the way it should be. So he's explaining, and that's the way it should be. We take the time. That's we get it right. I didn't see it, so I can't say nothing. Are you going with the tough play there? Is that why you gave the single? Yeah, I'm going tough play. Because I because from what I understand, it it might have been maybe a little inter, uh, movement with the shortstop. But it was I, I don't know if the third baseman was try was the one making the play on the ball and missed it and couldn't make it. Uh, well, I, the third baseman had, that was the attempt, and that's yeah. what I thought the obstruction was there oh, from that runner. But but nonetheless, we got a two nothing lead here on a two RBI single uh, with one out by Landon Young, and now in to bat for the Jaguars is Carter Perry, the second baseman. So we got one out, and the double play is still in order here. So we're trying to get this. Hey, you know what? Oh, you got to fight for your team. That's what that's what Coach Horn's doing over there. Of course, he's going to. He's got a you know he's got a point because the the field umpire did, uh, did throw his hands call, up. He, he threw his hands up? up. Okay. He didn't point at it. He threw his hands up. Right. I mean, and that's fine if they if he did call dead ball. I think I think the I think uh, the cadets have a have a have a good argument here that runner should go back to third. One run scores if he goes dead ball that way. Right. Yeah. I think that's the right. I think that's a good argument there. That's a good argument. So we got another uh, attempt here. We'll we'll be right back, folks. <laughs>
So it looks like, folks, we have the ruling here, and there was the dead ball called, so coach was correct there, and uh, Sissom is going back to second base, and it looks like we're going to have Deverman come back to third, so it's only one run scored at this point with one out, which I think that's that's the right call because he did throw up his hands on the dead ball before, and so that stops the play. And uh, so we got that all straightened out. Yeah, you know, these are one of those things that you could chop up as learning tools. Right? Now, not only for high school baseball coaches, players, but also the umpires. They like Absolutely. If they go back and cut that video, they can use that for exactly information. Now, now it's going to be interesting to see how this young man comes back from having this little layoff of... Uh, yeah, and he wasn't throwing at all. Yeah, he played Mitch. a little catch, but not... They didn't give him any, which I would have asked if I was CBC. Carter Perry. Now it's 2-0. and oh. Base is still loaded. One out. One nothing. Zumwalt West. Beautiful day here. Puffy clouds, sun shining. This is a great day for baseball out here at the ballpark. Missed a little low. That's the right spot. It was just a little low. Like that dark cloud to get over that sun, though. Not gonna lie, it's a high sky when it's not in there. Oh yeah, uh, when that yeah, yeah, yeah. when you got some uh, clouds not covering the sun there. That's a tough one on some pop flies. Oh and, yeah, and a little and the wind. White white baseball, white sky. That's tough for the pitcher for CBC and, and Fuqua to come in there and just have that long delay there. Yeah. Um, all the adrenaline was up. Now it's down and. Um, You'd like to see him ask, ask us uh, for a couple extra pitches um, prior to that at bat. So now we have Nolan Whiteside, center fielder, stepping in. Bases loaded, two nothing now. Jaguars and ball th ball one. You see a lot of uh, familiar names, you know, yes. that you have here at West, and it, it just shows like the talent that's in that household. Uh, <laughs> wow, right? Right. You Deverman, you got Whiteside. I think Whiteside had his uh, older brother was here a couple years ago, right? And that misses in. 2-0. and oh. So now Fuque is really struggling here. This has become a very long inning with a lot of pitches. And he's he's missing in the zone. I mean, let's – we got to – Oh! oh. 3-0. You can see a little bit of frustration starting to build on the young man, right? You can see a little bit of the frustration building uh, on the sorry, young man. Sorry, I, I, it's the, it's the, uh, some of the background uh, noise. We ignore those people. I know. <laughs> They're just fans having fun. So back-to-back -back walks, and it's uh, going to be an early exit for Fuque. And, uh, hey, you know, that's all right. He's got uh, – coach has got to do this. It's that time. So we've got a break here in the action while we get this pitching change here. And number 20, Mitch, who we got here coming in? I, I'm going to go with Hudson Tarando. Uh, he's got three games uh, pitched this year. He's got four and a third innings. Uh, he's got a save on the year. Uh, he's given up two earned um, on the season. So uh, he's he comes in in leverage situations. So uh, he's used to coming in the game uh, late. He doesn't have a start. So uh, he's used to coming in and uh, either cleaning stuff up or shutting it down. So. So he's going to get his eight warm-up pitches, and uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
So Cameron uh, Fuquay goes a third of an inning, two hits, three runs, three earned, three base on balls. Those base on balls, Mitch, are what kind of did him in there? Uh, it's the free bases, right? You get you had the two strikes to lead off the game, you know, two two, and then he hits them, you know, and he has the hit by pitch, and then it's the uh, soft single to right field, and kind of the wheels fell off. The catcher Kyle Feisty now at bat. Ball one. So two and zero oh now to Feisty. And a ground ball to the shortstop between his legs. And that's going to play two on the air. Feisty back into first. So got the ground ball. And the shortstop, Bryce Edmonston, can't come up with it to turn the double play. Looks like he kind of rushed that a little, Mitch. Maybe an in-between hop. Yeah, I mean, what do you, I mean, you're trying to get yourself out of the inning. This is where the you know you, you have to find a way as a team to regroup, not look at each other, not be disappointed because you got a lot of hands on the hips right now and not a lot of people talking to each other. You got to find a way to disconnect what just happened. This that you know prior to that, these these runs scoring, else it's going to continue to go downhill. So we got a pinch runner in Signorelli on four, and he's running. And the throw down is that's a good tag. out. Good throw, good tag. And that's a heck of a throw by the catcher, Logan Winkleman, to knock down the runner. Caught stealing for the second out. And that's ball two to Michael Wolf, the freshman who's uh, been starting for this Jaguars team since the beginning of the season. And he's played pretty well, Mitch. Yep, he's got himself a nice little I always I always like that on base percentage. Right. It means he's doing something, whether he's taking walks or, you know, whatever. And sometimes, like I said, batting average is deceiving because obviously the young man just had an error in front of him, puts a ball in play. Not a real indication of his his game. So I like using that on base percentage and you can see that Forzomo gets on base quite often. So that was strike one. So another walk in this inning, and we're back to the top of the lineup with Alagna, who walked and scored his first at bat here in the top of the inning. 42 plate appearances. 42 oh, I know, plate right? appearances. I mean, that's only that's almost four, you know, four times uh, in a game with 11 games, you know, on a year. That's. Ball one. <laughs> and the runner goes. He slips a little, but the ball is outside. And Wolf is into second base with the stolen base. I wanted to see the catcher throw it again. He's got O's. Yeah. He could throw it. So another runner in scoring position. It is five nothing. Jaguars and Mitch two hits, and that's that's what we see here. That's been the struggle here for the Cadets early in this ball game. Yeah, and these 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 are things that are that are struggles because how did you get here in the first place? You know, right. you had to throw your big dogs early. So these are kids that maybe not have the experience of other pitchers 
Um, and this on both sides, because obviously the game, the way the game started for the Jaguars pitcher on a bump, can't give free bases. Three and zero. And and that's that's the errors that were created. You know, it's the it's the walks hit by pitches. You got to eliminate that stuff. So it's we easier got said than done, right? Three and one. Ball four. I got to looking at the uh, you know some extended stats for Fort Zumwalt West. They have they have guys. Uh, they run. Yes, they do. Deverman now, he singled and scored, and uh, one of the two hits in the top in this uh, bottom of the first inning. And I thought that was a great piece of hitting. Yes, because he poke just to shot right it over, field, yep. right over Jake McGee's head there at first base. These pitchers have struggled uh, in the, getting the ball in the strike zone. The command has not been there today for these young pitchers. And a fastball. Oh, that's and that's going to twist foul. And McGee comes up, makes a nice play on that. And it ends the inning for the Jaguars, but not before they take the lead. 5 nothing. We're going to the top of the first inning. Second. Top of the second. Thank you, Mitch. <laughs> You're welcome. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, pitching lessons, hitting lessons, fielding and catcher training, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention, and youth developmental and elite high school baseball teams. If you'd like to contact Legacy Performance Academy, call 636-579-7346. Located at 6633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. Here we go. Uh, going to the top of the second. Let's uh, see how CBC responds here. Coach Warren pulled him aside. These kids looking... Um, you know, highly motivated, maybe by some of the antics in the crowd, not sure, but uh, this team can swing it. So you can't, you know, five runs may look like a lot after the first inning, but um, this team has a lot of extra base hits, has a lot of team speed. So this is a crucial inning. Uh, it's been a long wait uh, for uh, Keel, uh, for Fort Zamalt West. And so how can uh, CBC come back and scratch a crooked number themselves and get themselves back in this ball game early? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to lead off the bottom, or excuse me, man, I am messed up with these innings. Top of the second inning, there it is, <laughs> with uh, Tyler it's Ellis, early. the designated hitter. And like you said, Mitch, you know, that's a long inning, long half inning, I should say, for this pitcher. So it'll be interesting getting back in here and uh, – Getting back in the strike zone. Yeah, one of the things that getting into to sit on this side of the, the fence, you know, you get to try to pick up on things. He didn't throw in between the innings either, you know, and that that was, a, what, an hour long, 40-minute 40, 40, 40 inning yeah. for them, so first inning. So um, here you go. Let's see how he uh, comes out. Keel deals. Take strike one. I Unfaced. like that. Keel deals. <laughs> Unfaced. No pun intended. Well, there you go. 0 2 quickly on two pitches. That's how you pitch with a lead. Come out. That's the attitude you want. Get in the zone, challenge these hitters. And you don't have to get cute either. You could just keep challenging with heaters. Curveball, ground ball to Alagna. Picks it up, makes a nice throw. That kid never gets in a hurry. He trusts his skill set. He's got a good arm. He's kind of knocked it down, picked it up, and said, uh, let me take a couple shelf steps and show it off. Because that ball was hit hard too, Mitch. So Alagna makes the play for the first out, and we have Anthony Toko. Ooh. Oh! The HBP. So Togo get hit, gets hit by the first pitch he sees, and we have G.T. Taylor now at the plate. 
This young man is a solid ball player here, Mitch. Yeah, I get to see him on a regular basis. Uh, his his pops is a uh, runs for the athlete out of the facility, so I get to see him work quite a bit. Short lead. And, and again, it's one of those things when you look at numbers, you know, it's like early in the season, it's 11 games in, he's hitting 231. Is that a real indication of how he, you know, is swinging? He's a sophomore. Right. That's how you see you young this CBC team is. And he squares the bunt. Got him. The throwback. Uh, boy, a little quicker tag. He might have him right there. I think he, he went in standing up, so, they, you know, it's like he expect him to go down to slide, and I think he just whiffed the tag because he yeah. tried to go to the dirt. So 2-0 and now. After that, that first three-pitch first out, he has thrown – He's hit the batter and thrown three balls. I think as a as a hitting, some of the adjustments that I would make so far if I'm CBC is like just in general, this young man throws, you could see him falling towards the first base side as he you know, as he pitches. So when he gets set and he's starting to come through his mechanics, he's falling towards the first base side. It's very difficult to throw that ball back in. I would almost take away that half of the plate on the inside corner. And maybe that's what they're gonna go out and talk about now that he's falling that side because it, so it's missing. Yeah, it's five straight balls. Yeah, he's missing glove side because he's falling glove side. So if I if I am if I am CBC, I'm taking the inner half away. Folks, while we got this break here, I want to just you know we're looking at a little history. This uh, this tournament started back in 1997, Mitch. That's that's been a minute. That's my time frame. Yeah, baby. Uh, I was a junior. So in high school. tell me who was the first winner of the Midwest Class? I'm gonna Do go. You know? No, I don't. I but I can I take a guess. Yeah, get, take a guess. I am going to go with a Francis Hal North. Incorrect. Is it a GAC school? No. St. Louis school? No. Private school? No. Kansas City school? No. Okay, I'm I'm done. Jefferson City. Oh. Jefferson City is the first winner of the Midwest Classic all the way back in 1997. And the runners go. Ball's low, and the throw, that's a nice job because that, that could have got out into the outfield right there. Double steal. Nice aggression there by Coach Horn. He's got nothing to lose. He's now 5 nothing. He could take all the chances. I love Might it. as go. well, right? <laughs> you yeah. can see what your team's about. you gotta, you got to find out what kind of guts they have, things like that, because just because you're down 5 nothing in the – top of two doesn't mean anything in high school nick rollo is at bat here and he shows the bun again takes the strike one and one now i wouldn't expect to see a squeeze here but i'm assuming that was just for show that was for show keels trying to get back into the strike zone here well, maybe they are safety squeezing two one He's shown that twice. Yeah, if you if you pay attention though, like so, I think they have made an adjustment. Somebody in the dugout might have been talking like that because he is up on the line on the right-handers batter's box. They are essentially taking and saying, "Young man, you need to challenge me in." Big pitch here, and he does. Oh, so that's uh, two strikes. That's where you want to go with that. Just trying to punch a run at this point. Move guys at the bottom of the lineup, get back to the top of your lineup, Mitch. We need crooked numbers. Crooked numbers? We need crooked numbers. Sometimes it's and the slow that, and steady. Well, maybe that's the what. Again, you have enough ball game. You scratch and run an inning and shut right. them down. You can get back in this ball game by the end of this, you know, end of the fifth. <laughs> so. He just fouled that one off. Got yeah, we're like you said, we're in the top of the second inning. It's a five nothing lead. You know, pick one here, there. Yep. Got to play defense. Get back out. You know that. That requires, though, they go out, take care of themselves on defense, get back on the mound, throw strikes. That's a foul ball. Yes, it was. Drop that bat. That went off the bat. You can hear it. Just think. <laughs> and you <laughs> Rollo said it. I left my bat like this. I watched a play just the other day, actually, on uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, yeah. something of that nature. Guys, you know, laid his bat behind his head and it sticking out behind his back, and it actually went fair in the air, and the catcher caught it in the air on a diver. Swing and a miss. Up in the zone, strike three. 
Rollo goes down on strikes for out number two. And we're back to the top of the lineup with uh, Wade Hunter, who walked in the first inning, got to third base, but they couldn't get him in. So he's got a chance here for some RBIs, Mitch. Yeah, uh, 19 plate appearances, so I'm not sure if he was banged up to start the season or couldn't you know, play right away. But uh, in 19 plate appearances, he's got eight hits. So he obviously competes very well in the batter's box. And he takes ball one. Everybody looks at regular depth. They're playing straight up in the outfield. Right fielder is shaded a little more with that wind. So he's off that line pretty good. You so know, three and zero oh here. It, it, it's interesting. Um, I, you got to take a pitch here, right? You hope, hopefully that he does. But it's interesting that the pitcher's living on the outside corner. The infield is playing to opposite field, but the outfield's really not. That's correct. Ooh. That's a good pitch right. right there. Three and one. You, and you could take again you, if your CBC take that pitch away because he's thrown that once in a blue moon on the inside corner. I'm s still sitting outside. I'll just take that pitch until I have two strikes. Three and one now. He was taken all the way there. You could of course. See. Yeah. He should have. Yep. And that's ball four. So the walks are what's becoming the theme in this game, Mitch. Free bases. I mean, there's a hit by pitch and two base on balls in this inning, and we have the base load, and all those are, you know, that's representative of what's on the bases right now with two outs. Yeah, the, in the first inning when CBC was threatening, again, it was led for a, a hit by pitch and then an error. Obviously, we were able to get out of that inning without uh, you know, a run allowed, but that half inning, at first half, you know, bottom of the first, there was a lot of walks. Um, and then, again, CBC's threatening with walks. Yep. Stay away from their free bases. But this is what you see. Again, This is these are guys that haven't had a chance to pitch much, so... Uh, this is my, what you expect or you get out of this. So the quick visit. Keel steps off. We have uh, Bryce Edmonston. You know he wants to make up for that E that he had there. This is this is the great thing about baseball too is that you know you you have a if you hit a double here or you just a base hit you get a chance to score get that crooked number here. Uh, it makes that error less. Uh, you know, you don't feel as bad. <laughs> exactly. And you got a dangerous hitter on deck in Derek Pitts, so nowhere to put him. Two outs, so. Ooh. Ooh. I told you. It wasn't going to take long before we get the white side of the batter's box. The white. One and one. Not the right. <laughs> it is definitely 0-2. <laughs> that was not a good call. I'm not getting fined. Misha's ain't gonna find me, are they? Well, <laughs> there's there's no reason that if if like if I'm if I am West or even CBC right now, and I I see that that call has been made, I'm I am going to continue to go further and further and further until it. I'm a Two body and one. Leg off. <laughs> and that ball's away from Feisty. And scores the first run for CBC. There you go. They got a break there on the wild pitch. I like this first base coach for CBC. Makes the big guys proud. Big old Ratterman. beard. Huh? That's uh, Coach Ratterman. And that ball is grounded foul. He was the right city head coach. Just came to CBC this year. He's your kind of dude. Same beard, man. Same belt. Well, maybe not the same belt. No, he, he's he's got he's much smaller than me, <laughs> and he's got a way better beard than I do. Way better beard. Like the beard there. Swing and a miss, and gets the strikeout because you got to protect that out there, Mitch. 
And uh, Edmondson goes down on strikes and ends the inning. And uh, we're going to the bottom half of the second inning with the score now, 5-1 Jaguars. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, pitching lessons, hitting lessons, fielding and catcher training, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention, youth developmental and elite high school baseball teams. If you'd like to contact Legacy Performance Academy, call 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. That's a uh, good pitch there uh, to end that inning. Um, uh, for Keel at Fort Zumwalt West, uh, leaving Pitts, uh, leaving him uh, on deck. Uh, that was a big pitch, a big at bat. You'd like to see Fort Zumwalt West there score two. Um, but uh, here we go, back to the heart of Fort Zumwalt West power. Nolan Sissom walked and scored. This man has. Big pop in his bat, Mitch. Just a sophomore, too. Yeah. Just a sophomore. Started as a freshman for this Jaguars team. Takes a healthy cut. I, I believe he played uh, second base last year, correct? He started at second base and ended up being the starting shortstop by the uh, midway through the season. You know, what's amazing is I haven't seen this young man pitch in the last couple of years. And, and when he was uh, at the facility, when his dad was coaching him, uh, he would pitch quite often in SISM. And I, I haven't seen that out of him, uh, both in his summer team, uh, which I think he's with the uh, recruits maybe, a Wiggins 16U national team. SISM, yeah. yeah. And, you know, usually – Kid, guys like this, you see them coming up, they pitch, they hit, they play, they, they just do it all. Yeah, everybody does, I guess, at that age, right? Everybody's a pitcher. Especially guys with this kind of talent. And that's ball three. It is now three and two full here to assist them to start this bottom of the second inning. I like that challenge up and in, Mitch. Out of play. I just like strikes. I strikes are good. I, I'm, I am. Uh, I like the uh, you know coach on the bucket kind of thing. <laughs> Those strikes now, bub. And that's ball four. So a leadoff walk, and uh, the beat goes on here in this championship game with these young pitchers. Looks like you have a new hitter. Logan Kowick. Lowen Kowick, C-O-W-I-C-K. Uh, Logan's had 10 plate appearances. Uh, doesn't have a hit, um, but has gotten on base, I'm assuming, via walk. So Kowick now hitting for Jack Hartnagel. You talked about it just uh, last inning, you know, trying to figure out that four, five, six, you know, who's going to step in, and, and you see change already after the first A-B, um, you know, trying to find the right fit for that middle heart, uh, you know, heart of the lineup. Logan Kowick, a step off and a throw over. Plenty of time to get back for Sissom. Oh, he got him. Oh, I picked him. That's my kicker. Be careful. Oh. And he holds on to it. That's a nice play there by McGee. I like that. He waited till he turned his back, then made the throw. And uh, that's a good rundown right there by the cadets. Shortstop, Edmonston, taking, taking the brunt of that on the slide. I think he got hit in the chicklets. 
Might have caught a shoulder to the. Yeah, I might have a little. He came up to try to tag him, so I think he's he he's checking face. his nose a little bit. He might have his head, you know. He's yeah, really, he's checking his nose a little bit right there in his face, Mitch. Yeah, he did. He came down very hard. So uh, caught stealing. You know, it's just getting ready to, to for the first out <laughs> to, to to ask. Uh, about the step back, you know, as you pitcher and you step off the mound and right. you disengage and you go backwards, you know, throw over to first base. And I'm thinking to myself, like, that doesn't fool nobody. <laughs> he just did it. So I guess I just keep every, my mouth every shut. Every now and again, it every works. now and again it works. And it did right there. So, And uh, that erases the base on balls, which uh, these this cadet team needed that. Big time. Get back to pitching from the windup, take a little pressure off. And looks like uh, Edmonston is fine. And uh, we're back here to the at-bat, and uh, Kowick hasn't had a pitch thrown to him yet. That's just a hard Actually, play. Actually, yes, it's <clears throat> ball one. Or did I miss that? I think I marked it. So I think we got a 2-0 count here. That's what. I'm pretty good about marking stuff because I don't want to sound like an idiot. Which, like, like the bottom of the first? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Mitch, and I already did, so there you go. It didn't work. You got you, you just you just have to minimize, right? Just minimize, minimize mistakes. Minimize the mistakes. Yeah. That's what we say. Minimize the mistakes. <laughs> one, uh, Two balls, one strike. They got one and two on the board there. So I don't know who's right at this point in time. We got two and two. I think they. Fixed I it. think there we are. I think we're we're in the right place here. Two and two. We got there. Curveball swing, foul tip. Nice pitch. He got that curveball working there, Mitch, uh, for the K. That's that slurve, baby. A little slurvy. Is that like the? Is that come from Seven Eleven? I don't think so. <laughs> You know, I, w I was going like right. Is that right. the cola or the cherry slurve? <laughs> I would go with cherry because it was a good one. <laughs> I like it. I like that. That's that's funny. And the first thing I went to is like 7-Eleven. Number uh, 21, Landon Young now. From, singled uh, and scored. Sorry, Mitch. Singled and scored in the first. From the Simpsons. You know, that's 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 where I went with the, uh, the slurpy comment there. 7-Eleven. That's where I went. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes to Young. Two and one now. He said, this is the thing about pitching. Uh, like throwing, just in general, just throwing strikes. You got a guy that's throwing strikes right now, and then Forza West getting themselves out. Two and two. Now, this young man is kind of settled in here for uh, Tornado. For uh, CBC, he's uh, in the strike zone. He's competing in the strike zone, and uh, he's got two outs. Curveball, good spot for that curveball. Yeah, I'd like to see him throw it again, like he did that one that he just struck out the previous hitter on, uh, instead of trying to push that baseball. Foul ball. We'll do it again. Three two. And it hit the batter in the box. In the box. In the box. If it hits him in the box, it's just a foul ball. <laughs> if he's outside the box, it's an out. That is your rule uh, chat for the day. Yeah. yeah. Line drive back up the middle. Landon Young went down and got that pitch in the zone. And uh, has a two out and a two hit day. Two out hit, two hit day. It's them, it's them two two pitches that you see that you'd like to have your pitcher throw a competitive pitch, not one that's low, starts low, bounces. You know, that doesn't help you. Carter Perry hits one past Edmondson. Who was shaded towards second base and back-to-back -back singles now with two outs for this Jaguar squad. Uh, 
Whiteside now who walked in the top of the first inning. Oh, boy. And uh, we have another mound visit here. I'm assuming he's going to make a change. This young man's had three uh, games that he's pitched in and uh, has only pitched about four innings. So he's kind of that specialist, comes in, gets you an inning, and then he, you know, is going to get you out of jams, which he did last uh, half inning for CBC. Um, so I was looking at that prior to this inning, seeing how long he was going to leave him out there yeah. to see if he's got the arm strength to go a couple. So, Mitch, while we got our uh, pitching change break here, we're going to go back to a little history. Looks like so, Garrison Lacasio. Would you – there have been some Illinois teams win this tournament. Okay. Could you name one? I would go with the – probably the Captain Obvious guess, which would have been Edwardsville. You would be correct. Okay. That is the Captain Obvious choice. It has to be because they, they win a lot, and they've won for 20-something years over there. It's like uh, the Francis Howell of our side. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, is, it, is that Father McGivney that's over there? Edwardsville has won it. Uh, no. Okay. No. You have a Moline, Illinois. Wow. Right? Yeah, that's a good one. Moline won that in 1999. Okay. And then we also have a Rock Island, Illinois. Rock Island? Yep. Is that like a, that's north? I'm not sure. You'd uh, have to ask Coach P because I think Coach Perkins is from that area I got originally. You. I'm, I'm looking over at our, in, our engineers and he's telling me that's north, so. It's yeah, because he's he's an Illinois guy over there. Our engineer, Drew and Lauren over there, who are bringing you the pictures and bringing out uh, taking care of our business over there. We appreciate them. Chicago land area, Rock Island. There you go. Oh, that's that's a good drive for them to come down and play. Whiteside now stepping in, two on, two out, and we have Hello. number twenty eight on the mound. Uh, I'm going with Garin, uh, Garrison Lacasio. One and two thirds. Lacasio. That's what I'm going with. I think that's correct. Lacasio. Ball one. Quickly two and zero oh to Whiteside. One one. First pitch strike. He did call a strike. Okay, my fault. My fault. You were looking up numbers. I got you. Oh. For crying out loud! Oh, <laughs> that out loud. <laughs> For crying out loud. <laughs> Good job, Brian. <laughs> Take it out of your pocket. <laughs> I don't have pockets. That's ball two. Yeah, boy, don't leave him hanging. That's always one that gets me as a as a coach. That when you have a pitcher shortstop trying to work runners, and the pitcher takes off, and he, he's making his way to second base, and you get a little roll me over or some little slap single over there. And it Tornado went one and a third. As Whiteside now is three balls and one strike. So coach is trying to piece together some uh, some pitching here. It looks like Mitch. Uh, he's going to have to. He's got. I mean, he's got enough guys here today. Um, they got a big roster over there that came uh, for this event for CBC. And a fastball gets in on wide side and he hits it foul down third no base line and it drops. No man's land. Three a two. To triangle. And the pickoff, no throw. Landon Young away from second. Perry away from first. 
3-2, they're running, and he takes strike three. That's a good pitch. I don't, he wasn't looking in and caught him. So after two innings of play, we've got a 5-1 lead here for the Jaguars. What better feeling than watching your son or daughter pitch their best game, catch the game winning out, or crush a stand-up double? That comes with talent and long hours of hard work that got them there. That's exactly where Legacy Performance Academy comes in, matching the hours of work, drive, and dedication to help your athlete build a legacy that lasts. If you want to contact Legacy Performance Academy, call 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. Looks like Fort Zumwalt West is uh, got a pitching change. Uh, number 13, Alex Wheeler, uh, is coming in for Fort Zumwalt West. He's got uh, has appeared in two games, um, no wins, no losses. Has three point uh, three and two thirds innings pitch. He's given up three runs, one earned, um, and so this is the first change of the day for Coach Goff. I think that's the only change uh, for Fort Zumwalt West. Uh, and a left-handed pitcher uh, comes out right away to face uh, CBC's, one of CBC's uh, big hitters, and Mr. Derek Pitts will lead the inning off for CBC. I have to give a little bit of head, uh, hats off to the pitching staff for CBC and that in uh, what they're trying to piece together today was able to get uh, out of that with uh, no runs allowed, um, had runners threatening, uh, runners in scoring position, but CBC was able to get out of that. Uh, we will see what CBC decides to do because a few guys that they have able to pitch today um, haven't pitched many innings this year. so. Uh, Coach Horn's going to have to work some magic, and CBC's arms are going to have to um, step up big here today. So, Mitch, the book on um, Blake Keel, two innings pitched, no hits, one run, zero earned, three base on balls, and two strikeouts. Yeah, the, the, you know, you, you would, uh, that's a nice day, right? Yeah. The young man is, uh, th that's, I believe that was his first start of the, you know, he had one other start on the year. Um, didn't make it long through that start, and then again, he had only four innings going. So he pitched, um, you know, two did innings what a day, Did what he was supposed to do. Did what he was supposed to do, and uh, you're seeing both teams, looks like they're at the end of their rosters for pitching staffs right now. So we have Derek Pitts now at the plate who uh, sacrificed Bunt in the first inning, move the runners over. Leads off the top of the third inning here. Takes ball one. You know, there's moments as a coach you look back and some of the decisions that you make, and this obviously young man is first and second. Your three hitter, your big pop, he's shown the history of that. Swing and a miss. And you know, you have them bunting thinking that this game is gonna be close like that, and uh, you, you look back and you go, man, should I have done that? You know, and uh, but that's the that's the nature of it. that's why you get to go back and, and make adjustments uh, and have those experiences down the road. One and one. Aggressive early take swing at that. There it is. Ground ball to Alagna. Two hop strong throw out number one for the Jaguars. So Pitts eliminated on the ground ball. Jake McGee now, who lined out to Landon Young, the first baseman, his first at bat. Alagna is a senior, correct? That's correct. Uh, did, did, does he have a place that he is attending? You know, uh, I'm going to tell you, Mitch, off the top of my head, can I remember that right now? I couldn't. I believe so. And a ground ball to the second baseman. Nice play and a flip for out number two. And that uh, is becoming pretty economical here on about 
five pitches, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, right? Strikes. Ground balls. You uh, you get ground balls with this defense. You're going to be uh, you're going to have a good day on the mound. Yeah, especially with Alagna over there at third base. The reason why I asked is just to, some of the IQ stuff that you see as a defender. Uh, you know, reading that hop that he just had, he, he if he was going to you know stay where he was at, he was going to have an in betweener, and he just created some depth with his glove and his eyeballs. Winkleman takes strike one. Now it's one and one. He grounded out to Alagna in the first inning I would I, we I would. talk about baseball IQ and that right there is a prime example of what you're talking about there right Mitch? yeah and you go back to the error that Sism had made earlier I, I bet if he could do it over again would probably have taken that same approach and trying to create depth or the long hop um, in, instead of trying to play the in-between because it's hard to field in between hops and nice ball poked in into right field for a two-out single by Winkleman. That's some good hitting right there, Mitch. Yeah, and I think that's their first hit of the day, correct? It is their first hit of the day. And that brings up uh, Tyler Ellis, the DH, who has been leading this team in hitting. He can swing it. He can also pitch. He's, he's, a, he's a, a big piece of... Um, CBC's team. Take strike one. Leads the team in, I uh, believe, innings pitched. That's what uh, is known around the baseball circles as a dude. Mm, I thought you were going to go with simple two-way. <laughs> but I guess everybody's two ways. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, in high school baseball. Yeah. High school baseball. He's a dude. No? I mean, he's got dude numbers. Right. He's got some big boy numbers. <laughs> I think, you know, coming into this game, he's hitting 400, had uh, 12 hits on the season, and six of them were extra base hits. 2-1. Big swing at the top of that zone. That's a good fastball up in the zone, Mitch. 2-2. Two and two. That fastball at the top, it's got to be right at the top to make it, you know, a swingable pitch, right? Competitive. Competitive Compe strikes. There you go. Competitive. That's, thank you, Mitch. And that, oh, and a little ole there by Perry. And a strong throw into third base. Yeah. And the, oh, he dropped, oh, he dropped the ball on the slide. And. Alagna, that ball just popped out of his glove as he goes to tag him, and that's unfortunate because that was a great throw over there by Michael Wolf in right field, had him dead to rights. And, and the runner is safe. We've got second and third now with two outs. And here we go with Anthony Toko now coming to at bat, the third baseman who was hit by a pitch on the first pitch of his last at bat. And he's got an opportunity to drive in a couple runs here, Mitch. This is big here. Ball one. This is a big A-B. They were able to get out of it. Forza Mall West was able to get out of it the last opportunity they had with runners in scoring position. So we need a base hit here to get a crooked number up. They're right back in it. Swing and a miss. He tried to do it. He tried to maybe give him an extra run. Right. And Toko's got one on the season. He's got six RBIs. That um, was a gapper swing. Yeah. He's got two extra base hits on the year. One of them has been a dinger. Runners away. Good pitch on the inner half. Gets Wheeler ahead in this count, one and two. I'm going six inches off the plate outside. And a ground ball foul down the third baseline. And we'll do it again. Oh, 
Curveball, grounded foul again. So we got a little battle going here. You like to see this too. Who's going to come out on top? So I was looking at um, Nick Alagno over there, and he is actually going to St. Charles Community College. There you go. And a ball up in the zone, fouled out of play. And St. Charles is an up-and-coming JUCO right now. Uh, they, they they are recruiting well, and they're taking care of business of you know players in the backyard, and they are getting a really good player in, in Alagna. Um, I see him as a second baseman yeah. you know, size-wise when you get to that next level. Ground ball back up the middle. Sissom to his left. Strong throw and makes the play and leaves two stranded. In the top of the third inning, we're going to the bottom of the third inning with the score still. Jaguars 5, Cadets 1. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, pitching lessons, hitting lessons, fielding and catcher training, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention, and youth developmental and elite high school baseball teams. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. That's big again, Fort Zumwalt West being able to get out of the threat. Uh, they had runners at, uh, CBC had runners at second and third, and uh, it was a big pitch there uh, by um, Fort Zumwalt West and, and being able to keep their team ahead by four. We got 5-1 in the bottom of three. Lacasio back out for this bottom of the third inning. So again, for CBC, um, their their pitchers, um, first time they might be seeing some double-digit innings. Uh, seems like he's got a lot of guys going out one inning at a time, but uh, Lacasio's back out uh, for another inning. Leading off this bottom of the third inning for the Jaguars is Kyle Feisty, the catcher. He reached on an error but was caught stealing and takes strike one. Young man's, got, young man's got four hits on the season with three of them being doubles. One and one. Curveball just misses. Oh, feisty. Another hit by pitch. So it brings up the freshman, Michael Wolf, who on this young, you know, it's tough. Freshman coming up playing at the varsity level, especially at this high level. He's played well, Mitch. And we just saw a cannon of an arm actually had thrown the runner out, but just didn't hang on to the baseball. Uh, yeah, he, again, um, you know, you think about sometimes the rich get richer, and this is just a young man be able to be a freshman, come in here and have impact. I mean, he has uh, shown the ability to pitch. Obviously, has that plus arm out in the outfield. Um, so uh, it's, he might be a kid that's going to be somebody that we need to watch because he's got everyday – uh, experience for Coach Goff. Ball one. Ball two. He walked in his first at bat. I like what Coach Goff did here is that he, you know, he put him in position to, you know, hit kind of in the back end of the lineup to give himself an opportunity to um, grow as a hitter, you know, not forced in that top half of the lineup. Signorelli running for the catcher. Feisty is back in. Easy. He's a threat to run. We showed that earlier. He was thrown out. but Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. It wasn't Feisty who was caught stealing. It was Signorelli, the courtesy runner. That ball is popped up on the infield. Shortstop Edmonston calling it. That win playing some havoc. Ooh. Woo! 
And a nice play out there with the wind in this sky, Mitch. There's little bitty things that, that, that uh, irk me in this game. One of them is being when the uh, defending team is getting ready to catch it and the opposing team decides they want to scream. Uh, that I one, know. That one gets me. A little sportsmanship, right? I think there are some things, you know, and we're not, we're not saying these aren't bad kids. Just I think we could do some different things in the dugout. I agree. I was just trying to be as fair as I can. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not – just one team or the other we we're hearing this oh, it's all of baseball it's we're, at the we're hearing levels. this everywhere yeah youth to high school yeah i agree yeah the fans can i mean the fans are allowed to do that kind of stuff they can act that way it just says a sportsmanship team versus team and that I is like bunted foul by alagna Alagna here in this third inning. He's already had two at bats and walked twice and scored once. And he's quickly down in the count and a swing and a miss. And he is 0 and 2. Signorelli off first base and another throw over and nice job there by Jake McGee just to keep that ball in front of him. Yeah, he's had to do it twice. He's tried to throw over there twice and he threw the last two baseballs in the dirt. Lacasio, from what we've seen, he's been the best in the strike zone of the three pitchers we've seen so far. Another throw over. Signorelli back in. He's going to have to wash his uniform. <laughs> Three say turn the page. <laughs> and that ball is down. So it's one two count here to Alagna. Back to the top of the lineup. Three at bats already in three innings. And that ball's away from the catcher. And Signorelli doesn't advance on the wild pitch. That's a break for Lacasio. This would be a good time to run right here. Any, either way you look at it, so you might be able to get the bag. Two and two. And a pop foul. And it's going to get down. Two and two. Oh, and a kick save, even though he didn't know it was behind him, and a beauty. Good job, coach. It's a great hit and run. Great hit and run count here. And that ball is low. Three and two. The extra stress, you put the runner on, now you're back to the top of the lineup, and the stress on these pitches gets bigger. Another pitch is going to get down. And I like the try on the deke, but it was two outs and runner. But that's that's smart baseball out there trying to deke the runner. So the single by Alagna. Looks like a line drive in the book. That's right. And uh, Signorelli gets to second. So we got... Uh, Two on with one out. And we have Brent Deverman who has singled and grounded out to the first baseman. Takes ball one. I'm trying to sneak a peek to see if CBC had a guy warming up. Uh, you know, with... Lacasio here, you know, yeah. he's like coming into this game. He's had two appearance, one point, you know, one and two thirds innings pitched, and uh, you know he's trying to finish his second inning of work. Yeah, we don't have any extra spotters here today for the uh, and a ground ball back to the pitcher. He bobbles it, stays with it, 
and good gets the job. runner. I love that. McGee off the bag, tagged him in just for good measure. I like that. Nice play there to stay with it for Lacasio. Didn't didn't panic. Yeah, that's the tough one. It's always the one that hits at the base of the mound, right? When it's going uphill, you're not sure kind of what hop you're going to get. And it seems like, uh, you know, when we work PFPs, we got to do a good job of trying to go get that baseball. Absolutely. Nolan Sissom up with two outs and two on. I wonder what he would have done if he'd have fielded it clean, you know, what he tried to have turned Absolutely. Two, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because uh, that could have got himself out of the inning. Ball one. Yeah, now you got to face Sissom with two on in scoring position. Two and oh. Yeah, I'm and he's been pretty good in this spot, hadn't he? Yeah, I'm not throwing to him. I, I mean, pick your poison here. You got a young man that, uh, you know, doesn't really have a batting average that's hitting behind him. So I'm probably not giving in. This is you, Again, we talked about it on Tuesday. Who are you going to let beat you? Right. You know, right. You, you're, you're not going to let this young man beat you. So, so he you just, put him on. there you go. Absolutely. For the fans that don't know why we're walking him, we're walking him because he can hit. <laughs> so the bases are loaded with two outs. 1-8 for 16. So we got another change. Ben Mole, M-O-E-H-L, in 263 on the year. 23 plate appearances. Uh, got some pop. Got a couple doubles on the year. Well, I'm running out of spots here now. <laughs> Take strike one. Picasso, who toes the uh, first base side of the rubber there, just stay outside. And let him get himself out. A swing and a miss, or a swing and foul back, excuse me. He missed the barrel. <laughs> And uh, I'll give you that. Lacasio quickly 0 2 to the four hitter. Heater away. Mole. Left handed batter's box. Throw it. Or is it Mole? Moel. I'm going Mole. Boy, he almost got him to chase that, Mitch. 1 and 2 now. I like what. Uh, Two and two. I, I like what Coach Goff is doing here. He's had three guys in this spot. Given an opportunity, what are you going to do with it? You know, I know it's just one at bat, but. And he smokes that down, and it's fair. And that is going to clear the bases, looks like. And we're going to have a play at the plate here, and the throw is late. I love it. Mole, a two out. Three run double here in the bottom of the third inning. That is big, Mitch. Well, I, I think golf might know he's probably going to get a second at bat. I'm, I'm going to go think? all in and say he's going to get a second at bat this year. He ain't going to keep that revolving door of the, uh, you know, making switches there in that four spot. But that he did that. I mean, again, going back and looking at some of the numbers, he's got five hits on the year and two of them been doubles. He's got six hits now and half of them been doubles. So clearly he can he can execute. That makes it an eight one lead here with two outs in the bottom of the third inning for the Jaguars. And that ball is away from the catcher, Winkleman. Landon Young now with an opportunity to add two. I, I takes think, ball one. I think the, the coaching decision for Horn to, you know, walk Sism, I still think that was the right play yeah, to absolutely. do. Absolutely. I would have liked to have seen them throw instead of going, you know, the one-two uh, off speed. I mean, he's, you know, they have to be paying attention that that outside corner for both teams has been there. Mm -hmm. You know, he could have thrown that outside heater a foot off the plate and see what he got. You know, he flipped that two-two up there, which, again, you're not going three-two bases loaded. You know, and Mitch, just coming back to this, Strike one. Coming back to this, you got to have that guy behind Sissom protection, right? Yeah, and that's what course. you're. That's I think what what uh, golf is looking for. 
Well, you know, this is this is why, like, looking at, like, and, and again, I know that your Dodgers are taking it to our Cardinals teams right now, but, um, you know, think about where they're hitting Paul Goldschmidt. You know, they're hitting him in the two spot, you know, trying right. to get protected by a guy that has 30 home run potential, protected by a guy named Nolan Arenado. You two and I mean? two. And so, so sometimes you get a little creative as a coach, and so a guy like Sism, maybe he needs to hit two, you know, so that somebody else can hit behind him. And that's him. behind Young. 3-2 now to Young. Absolutely. you got to have that protection for that guy, Mitch. And I'm sure that's going to – I'm sure they'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's game – and it's a base on balls to Young. Yeah, it's what, game two of the season? Oh, I was talking yeah. about West, but – No, I, I'm th- talking about the Cardinals. Yeah, they'll, I, they'll be fine. Horn's going out for a visit. I think he's got uh, so we got number looks 10 like coming we're gonna, in. Yeah, we're going to get another pitching change here. So Garrison Lacasio hands the ball to Coach Horn, and looks like we got number 10. George Shaw. I'll let you take it. Yeah, he's got one. In, he's got uh, an appearance. Uh, he's given up four runs, four earned in the appearance that he has. He has not recorded an out. Um, so... Uh, here you go, bud. Learn a little bit. <laughs> He'll go out and play against a Ford, you know, pitch against a Ford Zumwalt West team that's obviously feeling good right now. Has got momentum on their side, and uh, you know, this is a, again a learning opportunity. And that's what sometimes you got to take from some of these, you know, beatings, if you will. Is uh, there's always something to learn, um, and and you you think about this as a coach. You know, is he, did he leave the kid out there too long? The pitch selection that you may have had, you know, you had him, he had him 0-2. Um, he had Mole 0-2 and then, you know, tries to throw two wrinkles up there and it gets a 2-2 count. And he's obviously bases loaded. You don't want to, you don't want to walk the guy. So you throw a cookie and he makes you pay. Um, that at bat he had controlled. So those are learning opportunities for those young men to get out of there. Lacasio did the best that he could uh, given the amount of experience that he has had this year. Um, so again, hats off for trying to battle for your group. Uh, but this and this Fort Worth West team is pretty darn solid. So um, you got to pitch well against these guys. So Mitch, the numbers for. Garrison Lacasio is, he went two-thirds of an inning because he came in, got the last out of the second inning, got two outs there. No, that's a full inning. Excuse me. So he went one full, two hits, three runs, three earned, two base on balls, and a K. But the big double there, that's the one that got him. He had him, too. He had him, he, again, it, it, I just go back to just – you know, having a feel for kind of the the, the game a little bit. The, he he has real quick, real quick. Let's let's get the folks up here. We got uh, Carter Perry now at the plate. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's good. Um, it, 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 I'd like to either see him flip that curveball up there. That's competitive because throwing balls, bouncing balls in the dirt doesn't help nobody. It starts low, it's low. You know what I mean? The curveballs. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Throw competitive pitches, and they go a long way. Now this 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 young man seems to have a little more juice in his left arm here. It's the first lefty we've seen from CBC. Yeah. A little whip action that's popped up on the infield. Somebody take charge, and he does. GT Taylor takes charge, makes the catch, and ends the threat. But not before the Jaguars add three and take a eight-one lead into the top of the fourth inning. Legacy Performance Academy is a unique sports facility that encompasses strength training, speed and agility training, pitching lessons, hitting lessons, fielding and catcher training, a recovery room with focus on injury prevention, youth developmental and elite high school baseball teams. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri.
everybody over here at uh, YBM. Uh, wish everybody happy Easter tomorrow. 80 degrees. Uh, it's a beautiful day, beautiful Saturday. So if you're dying Easter eggs today, do it outside. It's a great day. Uh, and enjoy your time with family tomorrow. Um, and then uh, we're experiencing some good weather coming up and uh, good baseball. We got another GAC game of the week next Tuesday. Um, I I excited about that. And um, CBC is going to be leading off with GT Taylor in the eighth spot. He's recorded the last uh, out of last inning. He's got a, he's got himself a homer and a triple on the year. So I want to watch him run. Right? I do. Absolutely. I like wheels. <laughs> so top of the fourth, we've got Alex Wheeler still on the mound here, coming out for his second inning of work. Uh, big moment here in this game. Attack the zone, pitch with the lead, get his team back in. And there you go, strike one. Stay there. It, 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 Stay it, it, there. Yeah, this is this is the thing. As as like a, you know, an, an opposing team, it, this it's tricky, especially at the high school level, because you'd like to see a lot of strikes be thrown and being pumped in, and you don't want to give strikes away, because obviously the more strikes you have on you, the less your batting average is, right? So it's like, do I go out first pitch swinging? And that ball is hammered into left field, and one hops the fence. And a leadoff stand-up double for G.T. Taylor here in the top of the fourth inning. That ball was smashed, Mitch. You know, that's that's the thing. They're chasing seven, though. And so, as a pitcher, just keep throwing strikes. Don't worry about if they, you know, get that double or even if they scratch a run here. Um, throw strikes. Nick Rollo now at the plate. Struck out his first at bat. And that ball is to Good. the backstop. See what the radar gun said there. 90? That was a 90 on the radar gun. We got the radar gun over here. It was 90. The baseball he just threw? Yeah. That's what it said. And that ball is hit into shallow right field. Wolf under it. Backpedaling, though, and we've got a play at the plate. And uh, no, no challenge. You can't blame him. Coach saw that at third base. Uh, Mr. Wolf has a cannon out there. He does. The only thing you're trying to do is draw a throw to have him throw it away. He was even on his back foot. So... On the wild pitch, Taylor's at third, flied out Rollo to right field, and we got one out. With uh, top of the lineup, Wade Hunter, who has walked twice in this game with an opportunity to drive in a run. And another shallow fly ball to Wolf, and another opportunity, and... They're not going to challenge. And, oh, that's a great job by Taylor. I like that. He didn't go all the way back to the bag, watch the ball. That's that's great baseball. So we got a sack fly and an RBI for Wade Hunter. And it's an 8-2 ball game. Two outs now. Like, Bryce Edmonston takes ball one. I like what Coach Horn did. You know, a lot of the times you get to that that shallow fly ball, you know, you, you, you typically go halfway. You know, one, you got to probably know your speed. So, you know, a guy like me probably goes halfway versus trying to tag. But a guy with speed, you know, you'd be able to draw that throw. And obviously he did it twice. You know, ball hit to right field. One was a great throw. One, he airmailed it. And you, 
opportunity saw a run. Because you got a freshman out there, young kid. He just he's had two really good throws, and he's pumped up. He's feeling good, and he airmails the last one. Hey, odds of baseball, right? Right. And that happens. He's a young player. You know, he's feeling good. A little adrenaline pump. Yeah, I think it, I mean, it even happens in the next levels. Like, yeah. you, you see it at every incremental level, right? So if you see it once you get older, you still have those experiences. College, you still have those experiences. That's good now. piece of hitting, and it is a fair ball. Oh, he's going. And Edmonston hustling to second and gets nobody in safely. At third base. Nobody at third. Stay back. So a hustle double for Edmonston keeps the inning going here for the number three hitter, Derek Pitts, who has sack bunted and grounded out to the third baseman with an opportunity to add a run here. I want to see him park one. He's a tall, athletic player. Curve ball, ball one. Wheeler, little trouble here with two outs. It's gotten a little wild too, man. Yeah, I like this kid's moxie at the plate and, and Derek. Curve ball, outer half, strike one. One and one now to Pitts. McGee on deck. And that ball's in the dirt. Two and one to Derek Pitts. Three and one, he's behind now. And here you go, Mitch. This is a pitch right here. Uh, challenge him? Uh, yeah, it's going to go over the yellow line. Took a little off, and it's a base on balls to Pitts. So we got first and second. Jake McGee. Laundry everywhere. <laughs> line to the first baseman, grounded out to the second baseman. Good opportunity here to add another run for this CBC team. Curveball. Strike one. Where are we at with McGee? What is his, what's he looking like on the season so far here, Mitch? You know, Jake comes back and ball one and good read, good read by Emmiston. Pitts didn't follow. Go ahead. Uh, one and one. You know, having a chance to watch, uh, you know, McGee over there uh, last year with that group, uh, you know, playing some first base. I think he had some arm, arm injuries that let him yeah. to, to yeah, move he to didn't first pitch, base. Right. And then he, he played very well. And then obviously they put him back there again this year. Uh, but he's a kid that coming into this game was hitting almost 360 at an on base percentage that's high, good slugging. He's a regular guy for them. And again, it's another guy that has, uh, you know, half his hits are extra base hits um, and leads this team in RBIs. And he's got an opportunity right here. One and one the count. After that ball gets away from Feisty behind the plate. Another ball up in the zone. And Pitts takes off and gets the bag. Just slide. Like so a stolen base. That made me nervous. <laughs> well, and the ball was on the left field side of the bag. You just always you see you see uh you know you running into a bag like that and all of a sudden you have to slide. If you're not looking in, you don't know what to do. And so then if you run to a bag and you see like an uh oh type decision, sometimes that leads to injuries. And you see young man's going to University of Cincinnati to play, you know, baseball. You you don't you don't want to see an injury. 
It's three balls and one strike. Three balls, one strike to McGee. And uh, Pitts at second. Edmonston at third. Winkleman on deck. One spot, one zone, bud. And that ball is hit foul. Off the leg of McGee. And uh, takes the count full. 3-2. Big spot here for Wheeler. Fastball. Fouled. Coach making the play over there. Trying. We'll do it again. 3-2. Another fastball. Back up the middle by McGee. And that's going to plate one. And Pitts stops at third base. And and I think we got an injury. Because Coach Horn was walking this way right away. Uh, he, when he, you could see him halfway, he started to limp. Did he? Yeah. So might have pulled a hamstring, it looks like, maybe, folks. Oh, man, I hate that for this young man. So we're going to get a, a pinch runner. Number two will be Max the Spillman. Max Spillman, two for three coming in. and uh, But, hey, look, a big RBI single there from Jake McGee. Probably would have scored two if Pitts doesn't come up lame there. And we got first and third still with two outs. And Winkleman is a dangerous hitter here. Yes, yeah, young man, like it's, you know, it's, Part of the show. This is, uh, you know, a kid that's got everyday uh, experience. He's a, you know, the backstop for this group. He's got a slugging of 633. Again, half his hits have been extra base hits. Um, so this is a big opportunity for CBC to uh, keep scratching. So an RBI single, and uh, We got a moment here. Yeah, they, they were looking. I think they were looking at his cap. So I don't know if um, it's a cramp or what. Yeah, that's just tough. That's tough. Uh, I really like this young man. We we got a chance to to talk to him on one of our player spotlights, and uh, bright young man, and uh, got a big future in front of him, going to uh, Cincinnati. Yeah. Bearcat. He fills out that uniform pretty good. So while we got a break here, folks, uh, we've got an 8-3 ball game. Top of the fourth inning. We'll be right back. Looks like they're getting ready to make a pitching change for West. I can't see who's coming in. Number eight. Number eight for Fort Zumwalt West, Ben Bowden, I'm going with. He's got uh, four appearances. He's got six innings pitched, giving up just one run, um, one earned run. Uh, so Ben's got some experience under his belt this year, coming in late in ball games to try to shut shut it down. And this is a big moment for CBC. You don't want them to uh, cut this game in half. So, um Let's see what. Uh, CBC can do here with two outs. See if they can scratch an additional uh, run. You, you kind of feel for the young man over there at CBC. Um, when I watched, you know, going back to, if you look at the video later, uh, you know, one of the things you guys can do is when he, the first and third situation, he kind of delayed steal. Um, and didn't pick, peek in. He kind of took it for granted, and he kind of come up a little lame there when he was going in the second base bag and kind of checked up. This is why I tell kids it's easier to slide. Just have them slide in that bag and look in and, and kind of cheat. Um, you know, that, that's something that um, 
you know, you can grow as an athlete, as a competitor, uh, just slide. You know, be safe, slide, don't try to check up late. Um, I'm hoping that's not what kind of helped, you know, caused him to tweak an ankle or something. Alex Wheeler went uh, one and two-thirds innings, gave up five hits, two runs, two earned, and a base on balls, but the uh, had a, gave up a couple doubles, big hits in this inning, which uh, kind of led to where they are at this point. So you're you're not out of the woods here yet, though, Mitch, with Winkleman and then Ellis right behind no, you. No, this this I mean these these are the like again going back to just you know who the dudes are of the team. These are the guys that yeah. you don't want beating you. So it, you can't give in to Winkleman here because the guy that's sitting behind him has also got a guy that have his or more than three quarters of his hits are extra base hits with dingers in it. And these two guys are the tops on the you know some of the top dudes on the team as far as RBI opportunities go. So. Winkleman is one for two. Takes ball one. And uh, it was interesting at the top of the show, I was looking at uh, just kind of where, you know, what Fort Zumwalt West had. And I, I was watching uh, shortstop. Nolan Sism had ran over to the, the bullpen and threw a couple. He hadn't thrown an inning yet this year. Might get some today. Runner goes. Oh. oh. Let him have it. Yep. Coach Horn, look at Coach Horn. <laughs> Or he might he might have had a hit and run on, you think maybe no. early this early in the count? No, no, uh, okay. I, I'm not gonna say no because I'm not a, I'm not over there coaching. But it, like I don't think that this that's the routine, you gotcha. know, coaching decision. It's first and third. One and one. Curveball in the dirt. I will tell you there are, there are some. I mean, coaches obviously know their players way better than I am ever gonna do as a guy sitting on this side of the fence, but. Sometimes they give hit and runs just to force kids to swing on certain pitches. Right. Runner goes. Fastball up in the zone. No throw. So the base is taken by McGee. So. Should be two second two. and third, two out. Should be 2-2, two, two, right? It is 2-2, two, two, yes. Big spot here for Winkleman. Curveball. Big pitch. Wow. Big pitch. Froze Winkleman on the 2 2 curveball. Gets out of the trouble. We go to the top, bottom of the fourth inning with the score 8 3. What better feeling than watching your son or daughter pitch their best game, catch the game winning out, or crush a stand-up double? That comes with talent and long hours of hard work that got them there. That's exactly where Legacy Performance Academy comes in, matching the hours of work, drive, and dedication to help your athlete build a legacy that lasts. Contact Legacy Performance Academy at 636-579-7346, located at 633 Goddard Avenue in Chesterfield, Missouri. That was a big pitch uh, for Fort Zumwalt West, big bender. And I think that uh, that approach there from CBC's uh, Winkleman, which um, I was, you know, kind of expecting him to try to send the baseball out. And um, but that pitch again from Ben was was huge there. Um, you know, the the uh, first and third situation swinging at the first strike that he saw. I think allowed uh, the pitcher from Fort Zumwalt West to get in the uh, opportunity to throw that curveball there. Um, so uh, tough AB uh, for for Winkleman. He's a good player, uh, but I hope again you just learn from opportunities. Um, and so when he has that opportunity come late in the game, because it is the fourth, you know you're going to see him again. He's going to hit in the sixth or seventh inning, uh, assuming you know. Uh, they get outs here, but uh, he, he, you know, hit again. So hopefully he learns. Absolutely, absolutely. So back out on the mound is George Shaw for his. He got uh, the final out in the bottom of the third inning. And this is another young man with uh, minimal experience this season for CBC. So how does he come back out for his? Uh, you know, full inning to work here. Well, 
Whiteside takes strike one. I like this young man's. Uh, he has that good whip action. Yeah, then Shaw's. I like. I like the. And a ground ball, knocked down by McGee, but not enough to get uh, the speedy Whiteside. Heck of a try there, and just kept it in front of or kept it close. Yeah, that, that you. I mean, if that ball sneaks by him without getting a glove on it, that's an easy double. So that's a great defensive effort there by Jake McGee, holding Whiteside to a single here to start the bottom of the fourth inning. Now we have Kyle Feisty, the catcher, who has reached on air, hit by pitch, and scored a run. Ooh, yeah. Takes ball one. Whiteside away. Now, he was hurt early in the season, so he's just now getting back. And a ground ball to G.T. Taylor. Nice flip. And a nice 4-6-3 double play there. The old pitcher's best friend there, baby. That's the pitcher's best friend. That was smooth. That was smooth. It really was. That's a, that's a great turn. I love that, Taylor. The nice flip. Good feed to the shortstop, Edmonston, with a good turn. I could watch a double play every day. What's your favorite play in baseball? Double play. Or a guy's diving and catching the ball. Uh, yeah, I think those are the gimmies, though, right? Right. The triple? They're is, the pretty. Is that, is, is that right. the most exciting play? Ooh. Or the 500-foot homer? <sighs> That's a good question, man. I mean, a 380-foot homer is not the same. Michael Wolf now is uh, even at one and one. But he you know has that. popped out to the shortstop and walked. That 480 plus. <laughs> the big bomb? Yeah. There you go. The majestic I, I one, I think that's got to be like the oh wow for me. I think the most exciting play is the triple. Two and one. Especially if you got the big guy running and he's huffing and puffing in there and bounces into third yeah, base. <laughs> maybe, I, I, I mean, that's because the outfielder fell down. <laughs> that's the only way that happens. That is fouled out of play for but. strike number two to Wolf. Two and two. You know, going back to the days of watching Rick Ankiel throw the guy out yeah. in, in, in uh, Colorado. I think those from, are the big ones. I mean, I love those plays. The plays at the plate with the big arms. Balls outside, three and two. You know what I mean? Yep. Every, everybody was walking off the field on that one. It looks like that outside corner is not in play anymore. I don't know. We're going to find out. Three, two. Shaw trying to finish this inning. And that ball is lined into left field and back on it is number two. Just came into the ball game for CBC. Max Spillman makes the catch. He is in for the injured Derek Pitts. We're going to the top of the fifth inning with the score, 8-3. Don't have time to train in marketing? Don't know where to start your market research? Don't understand how to build your social presence? You don't have to. REP can do it for you. Have a full digital marketing plan ready for you to implement when you start with our DIY marketing. Contact Red Earth Productions at 636-400-3199, located out of O'Fallon, Missouri. They say the baseball will find you, Brian. When you come in the game, uh, the replacement for uh, Mr. Pitts, um, that baseball is going to find you, Mr. Spillman. So he goes in and, and replaces him out in left field, and wouldn't you know it, the last out of that inning is uh, to the left fielder. You know, you look at that. That's one of those light outs. That's that pop Wolf has in his bat as a freshman. I mean, that ball was driven. Yeah, and, and, and you know, as, as he gets bigger, faster, stronger, that baseball is going to get hit over his head and hit off that wall. You know, I, I think that's a short porch over there. Obviously, you have the tall fence, but, you know, it's only 320 down the line. I think that's a flick of the wrist uh, for that young man as he gets older. So we have... These two catchers have phenomenal arms, by the way. Yeah, they have good... Yeah, exactly. We have uh, coming to the plate, leading off the top of the fifth inning, the DH, Tyler Ellis who has singled and grounded out to the third base, and he's one for two today. Yeah, this young man is uh, heading to Linwood. Uh, he's a Linwood commit, uh, so um, 
he is staying local here. I like that. Yep. And it, it seems like the, the schools in this area are recruiting well. Ooh. Leads off with a curveball for a strike. I'm going to say don't throw that again because he ain't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's baiting you. Well, he hadn't seen it yet, so another curveball, and he went around. So he started in with the curveball and then went out with the curveball, and he's ahead 0-2. Nice pitching here by Ben Bowden to the big bat in this lineup. You think he's going back to the fastball? Nope. I don't think so either. We got time called. And the fastball away. There you go, he did. But nothing close to the plate. That doesn't help him, though. Just to show me fastball that <laughs> it, it, you don't think it helps him? No. Curveball away. Popped him up. That's where it helped him, Mitch. And I, I think Young that makes that. That's a great sequence because that fastball out. He's looking out but then throws the curveball right behind on that or gets him to pop up on the infield. I'm one of those that, like, when you waste pitches, they don't necessarily always understand that or agree. There's, you know, when you throw a ball two feet outside. But then you're changing eye level. Not really. Yeah. I don't yeah. think so. I, it's, it's like it's like if it's like throwing a ball and you're bouncing Real quick, balls. Anthony Toko now at the plate takes ball one. He's been hit by a pitch and uh, grounded out of the shortstop. You know, when you, you have, like, an 0-2 uh, curve and you you know you bounce it. It yeah. doesn't change anything for me. Gotcha. You know, as, as a as a competitor, as a hitter, you know, you throw the ball a foot outside. It doesn't it doesn't change it for me. You gotcha. throw it up in the zone that's above my head. It's not going to change my eyesight. You know what I mean? Because I'm looking for a particular zone anyways. You tunnel the baseball from strike zone to a mini one out of the end. Two and zero, oh, and that ball is lined to the second baseman Perry. Makes the basket catch kind of nonchalant there, man. That was the old. Uh, uh, That's routine, baby. That's routine. That's the old Willie Mays right there in the <laughs> infield. Willie Mays Hayes. <laughs> oh. So a line out to the second baseman. Toko is down, and we're uh, at G.T. Taylor, who doubled and scored in his last at bat. He is one for one with a walk. So like it's that, ball one. Like that pitch there mm -hmm. doesn't help, in my opinion, help that pitcher. Now, if you have him all over the place and it's like an 0-2 and he's, you know, defending and stuff like that, I, I get like, you know, chase pitches. But the chase pitch bounces at the back of the strike, you know, the back of the plate, not the front of the plate. That that to me is the competitive you know, pitch down. That that changes the eyesight a little bit. Not the one that bounces a foot in front of Taylor's the Taylor's ahead. Outside. Taylor's ahead two and oh. And of course that's only my opinion. <laughs> Strike on the outer half. Two and one. Yeah that, that's out of Taylor. That, that's well, what you know, me that's, as a hitter, that's what we do. You know, we're talking baseball and those things. That's that's your your thoughts on what you're seeing here. Yeah you pitcher know, people pitcher, take or leave it. Pitcher might have something different. Yeah. You know, whatever whatever gives you confidence. <laughs> Three one, now. So, Bowden is uh, behind in this with two outs. Fastball outside. So Taylor has reached all three of his at-bats, a double and two walks. And we have Nick Rollo, the, excuse me, the right fielder now, at bat. With two outs. I think if I'm CBC right here, I got to try to steal. I got to try to get him in scoring position. Taylor's got the wheels for it, doesn't he? Yep. We can take them all for all that. 
for all that matters. First so we're going to find out. He's running. Well, he's making him think about it, isn't he? Yeah, there you go. That's pace of play. That's baseball right <laughs> That's there. Cat and mouse, Bubby. That's good baseball. And he's running. Oh, and a heck of a throw by Feisty to gun down the Speedy Taylor and a great tag. That was a one-hop system. That was just a great uh, play all around, Mitch. Yeah, we've seen a couple of tags by some of these infielders, man. Pow. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning with the score, 8-3. RAP has a full marketing team focused on the micro business owner and entrepreneur. Digital marketing at a professional level should be accessible and affordable to the micro business community. Our team is here to provide that for your business. Contact us at 636-400-3199 or at www.redearthprod.com, located out of O'Fallon, Missouri. What a what a way there to uh, end the inning for CBC. I like the effort that uh, CBC had there trying to, to swipe a bag there. Um, just a really nice play and recovery by the, uh, the catcher from uh, Fort Zumwalt West. And I actually r really enjoyed kind of the, uh, the approach of stealing that bag, that little walking leadoff. Uh, you know, trying to carry momentum. Uh, that's a fast runner over there for CBC, but you got it, like I said before, these two catchers from Fort Zamont West and CBC can flat throw the baseball. We got a little delay, but we got Nick Alagna for Fort Zamont West uh, leading off the inning, and Shaw's coming back for another inning. He, is, he has showed the ability to compete and uh, coach is giving him some respect. Top of the lineup, Nick Alagna. Base on, base, two base on balls and a single. He is one for one. Reached all three times. Takes strike one. He has scored twice. Shaw painting that outer half. 0-2. Oh He's got that whip and that little uh, that little spinner. I, I would, you know, I was shocked with his, watching his stuff today. You know, that one appearance that he had, or he gave up four runs, didn't make it out of the inning. Uh, didn't, you know, didn't record an out, and he comes in here. He's throwing a what a one and a third, one and two thirds. What has he got? Yes. Yeah. This is his five. Two, three, seven. Yep. Well, he came in, got the out in the fourth inning, the one out in the fourth inning, so he's out now out for the fifth. I think he came in the third, didn't he? Third inning, excuse me. I, I thought I thought he I thought he had a no. full inning under the Oh, belt. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yes. You're correct, Mitch. My bad. I was looking at the wrong wrong side. That's okay. <laughs> it's Saturday, man. So two and two. The heat's getting to us. And a ground ball back to Shaw. The hustle. old PFP right there. Yeah, nice good job. Hustle. You got to. These, these are things I like about the guys that uh, you know, like your guys that throw submarine and stuff like that. You know, like the. How do they throw the ball to first base? <laughs> so right? when you hit the ball back to the pitcher, don't give up because, you know, there's a reason why they don't throw over the top. You know, and, and so you know if they got that goofy arm slot, that ball can run away from you. Brent Deverman up now. He is one for three with a run scored. And he lines that promptly into center field for a one-out single. That's the thing. You know, coming into this game, um, you know, Deverman was only hitting 231. You know, coming in this game, and he's two for four today. You know, two, two nice, easy swings, nice, easy singles. 
and uh, you know he's going to raise his batting average up. So again, so coming into these early games, uh, you know, don't get fooled by some of these averages. Sissom has walked all three times and a steal right off the get, and Shot. he is in standing. Up. That was stole on Shaw. That's a great steal on a lefty. A great jump. Uh, it's first move all day. You you could see it, and it's just the young man's pitch mechanics. You take advantage of it as a as a runner. Um, you know, and his how he's goofy in his mechanics to begin with, and you just take advantage of it. A strike to Sissom, and now it's a ball. One and one. They have pitched around Sissom in this ball game, and he is still and on his walk. He scored twice. He's 0 for 0 with three walks and two runs. Doesn't hurt your batting average. And that ball's away from Winkleman. And a 2-1 count. And the runner advances on the wild pitch. I think that's a pass ball. Yeah, he personally. just whiffed it. Yep, he did. <laughs> you got to make that catch. It, yeah, that just happens. Staying focused in a game like this, keeping yourself in it mentally. You might have tried to pull it back, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit, trying to frame it, just whiffed. Right, right. Because it kicked off his shin guard there and kicked over to the dugout side, their dugout side, which is on the right. Yes. Got that one correct, Mitch. And just can't keep that fair off the fence foul. Two and two now to Sissom. Oh, we got a full count. I must have missed a pitch then, Mitch. My bad. And that ball is lined to the center fielder and he can't make the play. And that's going to score Deverman from third and a stand-up double. He hustled that. That may be the toughest play in baseball to make as an outfielder. Is that one that's hit right at you that doesn't really get over the stands? You know, you can't really get a good feel for it. It's, everything's white behind us, silver. That's a tough play. Great recovery uh, Try to, to try to get a play on the young man at second base. So a 9-3 ball game with one out. Sissom at second, and we have Mole back up to the back or to the plate who doubled a 3 RBI double in his first at bat of the game. Yeah, I felt like that was a, a changer. And you go back and look at that at the time, it's, you know, five to one. And, you know, let's say that assume that they scrap. And if it gets that out, it's a 5-3 ball game and not a, you know, 9-3 ball game at this point. You know, what kind of moves does West make, um, you know, to bring in pitching, the, the pitching depth that they have? That could all change. Uh, when you have a big lead like that, you can put a guy in that may not have as much experience to try to scratch an inning away. That's a huge at bat. Shaw, a runner goes, Send and the throw right is air mailed into left field, and uh, Sissom hops up and scores on the errant throw by Winkleman. So the stolen base. And the run scored on the E. <laughs> Landon Young now at the plate on the strikeout. Swing and a miss, strike one. <laughs> so a couple of runs scored on a single and a double, a stolen base and an error and a throwing error on the catcher. 
adds to the lead, 10-3 now. And that ball is behind Young. 1-1. One, one. Good hustle. Ball's outside. Two and one. You know, for, for Coach Horn, I think he's getting a lot of um, kind of feel for these guys that needed to, you know, that are throwing to one inning yeah. at a time. And, you know, they're trying to get to, you know, two innings. I think he's getting a lot of information for himself that's you know, might help him down the road once he gets in conference play and then, you know, district play and stuff like that to see where some of these young men can come in certain roles and, and uh, you know, get outs. Because this young man's done a really nice job uh, to this point. And this, again, going back to – Two and two, that ball is fouled straight back. Going You know, going back to the uh, number of innings coming into this. He's only had one appearance. Yeah, He gave up four runs bitch. and, you know, didn't get out of the inning. Didn't record an out. Now he's got an ERA. <laughs> Count goes full to Young. Two outs, 3-2. Bases are empty. See if he can get his team back in the dugout here. That's a good pitch right there, Mitch. Just able to spoil it. I'm feeling quite summery today here. I'm not. I'm in long sleeves, buddy. This is great. I don't wear sleeves. Well, I do wear sleeves in summer. Grounded foul. Nice Coach play. Goff with the big uh, one-handing, one-handed grab there. One-handing works, too. Handing. Yeah, I don't even know what the heck that means. He handed it. Well. Oh, he handed it to the uh, third yeah. baseman. Wasn't going to throw. it to him. Probably throws enough BP. Doesn't need to. Work his arm too much, right? No, did you see the route that he took? That's where his infielders get it from. <laughs> Ground ball, third baseman. Did you see the English on that? Comes up. Pick it. And an errant throw by the third baseman, Toko. And Landon Young is on base again for the fourth time, this time on the air. Going to have a... Pinch runner, number 10 for uh, Fords on West, Logan O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin? Logan O'Loughlin. I like that. So Landon Young has been on base all three times. He's got two singles, a base on balls now reached on the air. So he is one for three today with a walk and a run scored. Looks like CBC is going to make another change here. And, and Tyler Laskowski, Laskowski, gotcha. Sorry, bud. He does not have an appearance on the bump. So this is the first one of the year for him. Um, he's got some at bat. So uh, we'll see what he can uh, see if he can help CBC get out of another jam. You know, prior to the uh, game starting, I looked over at CBC's dugout. They have quite a few players that are here. Um, and I'm going to guess that this is probably the reasons why is, um, you know, they got a lot of guys that uh, might need to throw uh, for them. And this is way maybe where Laskowski comes in. Um, it looks like he has a good arm over there. Um, it's just this is his first outing of the year. So welcome. You know, to, to the to the uh, to the ball game, <laughs> Tyler. It's nothing like going against the uh, powerhouse that is Ford Zumwalt West. So we got uh, Carter Perry coming up to bat now. 
He is singled and walked. He is one for two. Run scored. Take strike one. You can see from that first inning, that's kind of where this started. And uh, this somewhat West group has had some good at-bats all day. They've really made these pitchers work. Foul tipped into the glove. He held on to it. Trying to get this third out here to get this CBC team back in the dugout. Hey, he's in the zone, Mitch. Living in the zone, buddy. Curveball, strike three. And that ends the inning. We're going to the top of the sixth inning with the score, 10-3 Jaguars. That's efficient. Who has time to create a video or digital marketing plan when you're busy running your micro or small business? Time is precious, and what we offer as a video production company and digital marketing company is our service, studio, and creative skill. Identify your brand on any platform with video. Contact Red Earth Productions at 636-400-3199 or at www.redearthprod.com, located in O'Fallon, Missouri. Well, Mr. Laskowski came out and uh, shut that down, and he got himself a third of an inning there and uh, threw three pitches, uh, was able to um, K up Mr. Perry from uh, Fort Zumwalt West. Uh, we have a score of Fort Zumwalt West. The home team has 10, and CBC has three. Um, big differences in the games, free bases, can't give them errors, mistakes. Uh, Got to minimize those if you want to keep yourself in the ball game. They're one pitch away from being, in, you know, just a couple of runs away from uh, being really competitive. Um, you know, so that that one big pitch that uh, Mr. Goff had made that um, a, uh, change and brought in Ben Mole, and he come up with that big double, uh, extra base hit to drive in three runs. Uh, I think that was a game changer for the offensive side for Fort Zumwalt West. CBC has to scratch here. They got it. They got to get double digit, or uh, yeah, double digit would be great. But they got to get a crooked number uh, to try to give themselves another opportunity. Well, I just, you know, I, I'm glad you're chatting it up over there, letting the folks know what's going on because. I really didn't hear what you said. I was working on my stuff there. <laughs> well, that's well, whatever Mitch said. I'm good. You have to. You have to trust me there, bud. I do. <laughs> that's the music's going. We got some country going in the background. Yeah, now I know. I we got to get uh, my headphones weren't working today, so we're we're out in the we're out in here, and we'll get that fixed. The elements. Yep. So we got uh, Nick Rollo leading off because he was on. He was in his at bat when. Uh, Taylor was caught stealing, so he's back up. And fouled that back to the catcher Feisty, and that is quickly two strikes here. I think uh, Bowden's pitched very well since coming into this ball game. Yeah, Mitch. pitch again, just being able to throw strikes with a lead. Yeah, that's the obvious, right? That, Absolutely. I understand it's the captain obvious moment, but. It's outside. You know, competing aggressively in the strike zone is uh, you let guys get themselves out. You obviously don't want to throw the ball in the middle of the plate. <laughs> but you spot up and you can get outs. One and two. Curveball pops him up. Shallow left field. And the catch made out there by number six. Brent Deverman. Wade Hunter now. Two baseball balls and a sack fly with an RBI. So he is 0 for with an RBI. His average is going to go down a little. I should say he's 0 for 0. Oh. He's got the sack fly. Then, then, then he's not. His oh, he's, I'm sorry. 0 for 1. 0 for 1. Sack fly. He's got a sack fly and two base on balls. 
Hunter Wade? So he's 0 for 0. That's what I said. He's 0 for 0, and you're like, no way. He's... No, 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 no. That, I, that, I meant you that see, and that's average. why you couldn't hear me. <laughs> no, and he t- I was saying quickly, his average 0-2. is not going to go down. Oh, I'm he's on sorry. Base percentage. I you're correct. He's got an RBI today. I mean, when you can get an RBI and you have, and you're showing 0 for 0, that's pretty good. Curveball in the dirt. Again, learning opportunities help if you if you if you if you take it for what it's worth, right? So down the road, they'll remember this. That was baseball that inning that he did drove that run, and that was that was good baseball for CBC. And that ball is back to the pitcher, and he's out. By a half step, as good hustle down the line by Hunter, just not in time. Good throw by the pitcher there. Two outs now. Bryce Edmonston is being pinch hit for by number four, Reed Hunter, entering the game. First pitch swinging, like it. Reed, Reed does not have an average on base percentage. He has had five plate appearances and four runs scored, so I'm guessing he's been used as a courtesy runner for CBC uh, up into this, uh, or mostly used for a um, courtesy. We got one and one to Reed Hunter. Two and one. I like this too, Mitch, because it gets you get you get a guy in that bat here. Uh, you know, I, I like that. Late in the game, you're down. It's not like he isn't trying to. You know, he's giving up. But you give uh, give a guy an at bat. See what he can do. Grounder, Perry. Nice, easy th- play. Three up, three down. Top of the sixth inning, we're going to the bottom of the sixth inning with the score. 10-3, Jaguars. Digital marketing is about cultivating a brand-conscious customer or consumer. However, you cannot cultivate this mindset or relationship without being conscious of your own brand or how someone relates to it. Training, support, and development have allowed us to be the right digital marketing team for your micro-business. Contact Red Earth Productions at 636-400-3199 or www.redearthprod.com, located in O'Fallon, Missouri. It looks like I am... Oh, we're going to have some changes. Um, it looks like I am 0 for 2 on the season on predictions on close ball games. Uh <laughs> I thought the St. Charles West Winfield game was going to be a little tighter than that, but we saw some free bases that uh, led to big innings, and um, here we are, uh, Ford Zone West and CBC at a 10-3 ball game with uh, Ford Zone West ahead. We have some changes, folks, that we are going to uh, try to figure out who went where. Um, we obviously, uh, Reed just came in the game. He had moved over to third base. Um, and then GT Taylor has moved from second base to shortstop. We have a new second baseman. It looks like number eight, Nick Rollo, has moved over there. And I can't see that far, Brian. I'm not sure who is in playing in right field right now. Well, Nick, oh, that's zero, not eight. Zero went to uh, second base. He is not on the roster, so I'm not sure who zero is for CBC, and eight is actually still in right field. That's a zero. That's a zero. zero. So they just pulled that one out of the wardrobe. Yeah, that could have been a, yeah, maybe a, oh. I was gonna say, I thought mine that was, was me. Off. <laughs> Pulled that one out of the wardrobe closet before they came over. I was like, man, I was talking this whole time. I didn't have no. The was you, I was. He was talking to me. Whiteside now uh, leading off this sixth inning. Ball in the dirt as 
Oskowski comes back out for the sixth inning. Mitch, we got to start talking players of the game. It's going to be an offensive guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Swing and a miss. Um, you know, I like the I like the big I, double. I I think that was the big at bat. So if you, you know we're going to try to give it to a guy, I think Ben Mole's double there. I like uh, what Deverman's done in that two hole all day too. I think for for me it's the wow factor, right? Like what what happened? Could you give it to the whole offense for, for no uh, no you know? no? I mean CBC Alagna. CBC had kicked themselves in the you know with with walks and yeah you know, they they took advantage of that obviously so that, you know I I can see that but for me it's it's been moles at bat that that uh, really that, finished yeah, it cause, off because I mean if you take that. At that point in time, you know, it's, this would be a 5-3 ball game, assuming, right, right. And, and and what decisions get made on both ends. Uh, I, I think that was a huge momentum swing for 3-1. 3-1 now to wide side, and that's ball four. It's been a, you know, it's a typical high school game here. There's not been... Uh, too much happened. You know, the the throw from uh, right field was a laser from Michael Wolf uh, for for some. Me personally, West. though, I I know it's been walks and runs, but he has the double two and his run scored and the 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 RBI. But Nolan Sism in the middle of this lineup, it's why Mole got that pitch. I mean, oh. you didn't want to pitch to Sism, and personally. I know it's a lot of, but he's got the double, three walks, an RBI. He scored all three times. That guy in that three hole is why this. The rest of those guys have success. He did his job. <laughs> to to for for me though, it's it's Ben. For anybody that's watching the show, you guys can comment below. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's ball one, and we got a pinch hitter. Number. Looks like 20, Braden McCoy. You guys got to let me know. 20? I got you, Braden McCoy. No, no, I was talking, I oh. didn't see that was a pitch hitter. For the catcher, Feisty. He'll probably re-enter, but he's getting a that bat here. Pops it up on the infield. Under it is the second baseman. He makes the catch for out number one. So it's Anthony. That's his first Let's thing. find out. Do we... Excuse me, uh, CBC mom. What is the young man's name? What is the young man at second base? Anthony Lakata. Lakata. Thank you very much. We didn't have it on the roster. Moms will always make sure we get it right. They always do. In a good way. So Anthony Licata at second base makes the play, and we've got Mike Wolf now. Michael Wolf into bat. Wide side still at first. I believe we've got two and zero oh here to Michael Wolf. I appreciate and a strike and the throw. It's not in time. It looks like we got a new catcher here too, Mitch. Yeah, I I, I can't see who that was that came in. It was uh, I'm guessing that's a, a two digits on there, I believe. Yeah, stolen base for Whiteside. Opportunity to score a run here. These this this experience is big for some of these kids. Like yeah. I know you have some moving parts over there for CBC. Um it looks like maybe number 11, so that might be Michael Seavers behind the dish. Swing and a miss. Strike man, two. It's two and two now to Wolf. You know, the, the, the young man that just entered, uh, you know, at second, at, at second base, it's an opportunity for him. You can see him trying to stay alive and working. So these are moments for these young kids to gain experience down the road. That ball stays up three and two. And you always you always look for that as a as a coach. You know, you whether you're up big or down big, you you try to find moments to remain competitive, but also give these young people uh, opportunities. And 
unfortunately for CBC, this is one of those moments. Yeah. Um, but again, the reps are valuable. Fouled straight back. Stays alive. Full count, 3 2. White side at second. Alagna on deck. A little nice, cool breeze right there. It's yeah, somewhere uh, behind the cloud. That felt good, didn't it? Yeah, it's a plus. Of, I got some. I'm wearing long sleeves, so with my hood up and for sun. And that ball is over the outstretched arms play. of Lakata, and uh, coach holds up wide side. And Michael Wolf is on with a uh, one out single, moves the runner to third base. So we're back to the top of this lineup. First and third with one out. Wolf is one for three with a base on balls. Very good for this freshman here, Mitch. Was that a ball or a strike? Okay. Sorry, I missed that one. My fault. Own one to Alagna. And that ball is over. What do you see? I know we've had some good outings today. We've had some good stuff from the... Uh, CBC group. We got to get a player of the game from CBC, Mitch. I know it's tough, and I know it's tough when you go like, but I always like to, I like to recognize players from both teams. I know they would have liked to have had a better game. Yeah, you know, looking looking at this kind of the list, uh, you know, what comes to mind, I guess, for me is uh, Mr. McGee. Uh, that ball is popped up behind first base. McGee under it. Which. Makes a nice catch. <laughs> that was a nice try. Nice try. <laughs> As uh, Alagna pops out. I, I out still, number two. I, I still like what's going on. Like little, I mean, little, little, little try. Oops, I dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe 30 seconds later. <laughs> we knew we were getting that call. I, I, it is now uh, two outs, and we have Brent Deverman up to bat again. Takes ball one. Sissom on deck. Two and zero to Deverman. Balls outside. Three and zero, and this is the guy you want to you you don't want to put you don't want to pitch again to system <laughs> with two outs. I don't think you want to pitch to this middle of the lineup in general. And that ball's grounded foul back in. He was go. He was green lighted three and zero. Yeah, it's ten three, Brian. Huh? It's ten three. Go for it. Right. Three one. Yeah, Coach Goff, give him, a, give him the, give him the, give him the old green. Hit a hit a three run dinger and uh, short game. <laughs> <laughs> and that ball is banged line drive to the right fielder. Nice play out there by Nick Rollo which ends the inning and leaves two on base for the Jaguars. It's 10-3. We're going to the top of the seventh inning. Don't have time to train in marketing? Or maybe you don't know where to start for market research? Don't understand how to build your social presence? You don't have to do any of those things. REP can do it for you. Have a full digital marketing plan ready for you to implement when starting with our DIY marketing. 
Contact us at 636-400-3199 or at www.redearthprod.com, located out of O'Fallon, Missouri. All right, we're having debates over here on uh, POGs uh, for for both sides here. It's that it's that wind uh, messing with the microphone, but um, top got, seven here. Yeah, we got uh, Max Spillman who came in for the injured Derek Pitts coming up to bat. Jake McGee on deck, and then uh, we'll have the uh, I think whoever the gentleman was we'll find out pretty quickly here who was uh, catching for Winkleman one last op opportunity swing and a miss strike one that's interesting usually you're taken yeah it's very three. aggressive here and uh, coach it. is sticking with Bowden on the mound here to finish this game he's pitched well in these last few innings. Yeah, he deserves it. And a ground ball foul of first base, and it's 0-2. I'm hoping for Mr. Bowden this gets him a start somewhere down the road. These are This is where you find out where your pitching depth is, Mitch, for the long term. And they haven't used their big guys today at all. It's been all the – and uh, they've pitched very well. Curveball, swing and a miss. Nice job by the catcher Feisty, who's back in. And uh, we got one out. He buried that curveball. Jake McGee now. One for three with an RBI and a stolen base. Ball's in the dirt. Spielman a little more anxious in his at bat. Oh, I think McGee was trying to put that one in the parking lot. <laughs> My truck's about 500 feet away. Uh, he tried to hit that. He tried to put it there. Yes, he did. That was a big swing. Curveball. Smoked at Perry. Nice play by the second baseman. Up easy for your out number two. McGee's hit the baseball hard today. He's a couple times right at people. Yes. Yeah, he has. So we're CBC is down to their last out, and we have number 11. That's Michael 11. Severs. Michael Severs, who came in yep. and caught, is at the plate. Bowden trying to finish this game. Too late. <laughs> Ball is fouled back out of play. <laughs> We don't always agree. We don't have to. No, that's all right. We we, we don't usually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why it's, it's fun. Not, it's not as bad as the minus five, minus three debate, though. <laughs> that's probably the worst one that we have. And that ball is fouled back out of play. Stays in it. One and two. The pinstripes is pinstripes is there. Yeah, that's, that's not as bad as the minus five, <laughs> minus three debate that we have. No, because he's like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 
We got some great podcasts up right now. We got some great stuff. Go check it out. Send them. Oh, frozen. On a hook. Oh, nice job, young man. Shaking the umpire's hand. I like it. That ends the ball game. Fort Zumwalt West is the state is the Midwest Classic champions as they take down the Cadets 10-3 today in this ball game. We're going to have some post-game interviews for you here. Mitch, I want to get your thoughts on these guys here, and I'm going to go out and get myself ready for these interviews. Yeah, well. Yeah, before this show, actually, uh, Brian had said that uh, the last time that CBC had won, uh, they had won state. I think that might have jinxed them. Um, but anyways, uh Good win for Fort Zumwalt West. Um, CBC tried to hang in there. They had threatened at times. Uh, there was guys over there at uh, big pitches that were made at, at big moments. Uh, hats off to Bowden um, for his effort of coming in. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the details and the stats on that, Co uh, Coach Brian. Uh, Brian was handling the stats on on um, the pitching. Um, it looks like uh, he might have gone, let's see, there was three and uh, two-thirds innings, so he might have gone three and a third inning uh, to get to get through this game for uh, Fort Zumwalt West. That's a good win by Fort Zumwalt West. Um, both teams coming in with just two losses on the year. Um, some had to give today, and, and the guys from Fort Zumwalt West uh, took it down. I believe Brian is going to get the players of the game uh, which I believe is um, going to be Nolan Sism for Fort Zumwalt West. Um, I thought Ben Moles at bat was there, uh, and then even uh, Ben Bowden. Those guys have um, some honorable honorable mentions um, for me. And then for CBC, we are going to try to bring over uh, Jake McGee. Um, I really like what he has uh, to offer. I think Brian's getting microphones hooked up and I am going to let you go. Maybe not. They're still getting set up. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll wait till I give the cue and I get that thumbs up. I don't think I'm supposed to go out there. They ready to go? They got to move up. Trying to get that perfect shot for you guys. You want us to pause the music? Yes, please. Could you? All right. Sorry, folks. We had to pause some music here, but. Uh, I'm out here today with our players of the game for this Midwest Classic Championship. First for the CBC Cadets, uh, Jake McGee, and for the Fort Zomalt West Jaguars, Nolan Sissom. Guys, uh, definitely, I'm going to start with Jake. Definitely not the outcome you wanted, mm -hmm. but uh, I thought you played a heck of a ball game. A little unlucky with little some unlucky. hits, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. A few right at him. A few right yeah. at him. Yeah. You guys, uh, you battled a little bit, but tough game. Banged up a little bit. Yeah. From the long week. Yeah. Got another long week ahead of us, so. I thought it was interesting, Coach, with the pitchers, these mm -hmm. young guys. Yeah. What about your pitching staff? Uh, we're, f we're fine. We got a few new faces uh, that threw today. Not our usual pitchers, but I thought they did a good job of uh, competing out there uh, once, they found, uh, once they found a group. So we got conference on Tuesday and Thursday and Parkway West on Monday, so. I really liked, I thought Shaw battled hard. Mm -hmm. I thought all of them battled uh -huh. hard. Got, gave up a few, a little too many walks, right? Yeah, a lot of walks, but like I said, it's not usually our pitching staff, but they did a good job of competing, so. That last swing, dude, I thought you were trying to park it in the, yeah, in the, cheap, was... in the cheap seats out yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> You've had a pretty good season so far. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about your swing. You uh, liking it right now? Yeah, I like it right now. I'm just trying to, uh, uh, a lot of hard hit balls, just not not a lot of holes so far, but still a lot of hits, so it's always just going to go up from here. Absolutely, absolutely. Congratulations. Just Thank stay you. right there. Appreciate you. Mr. Sissom, uh, you were on base all day. Yeah. Three walks, a double, scored three runs, an RBI, stolen base. You think you could have done a little more? 
Uh, no, I thought I did enough to, <laughs> to, to help us out today. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I thought you had a fantastic day. Thank I you. love your plate discipline. Thank you. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, I just try to stay true to my zone and early in counts at my pitches. And if not my pitch, then let it go, even if it's a strike, and then get down in the count or get to two strikes, just battle and make something happen. And I thought I, I saw this with Jake. I saw this with you. You got deep in counts, and with two strikes, you're just working away, and you know, able to fight off some pitches until you got the walks, right? Yeah. yeah. When you get on base and you see this with the team, and I think this was the catalyst. You know, you got walked, and then Mole behind you with the big hit. Yeah, that was big. Yeah, he worked a good count and came through for us, even though he was hurt yesterday and banged up today, so he didn't start. But it was a big at bat and big three runs for us early in the game. How far do you guys think you can take this? Far? Yeah, we got a good lineup. We got to test our the deep of our staff and guys this week. It was a long five, six games, so it's a special group. We'll see where we can go. Absolutely. I like both these teams. I think you guys are going to be right there at the end. Jake McGee from CBC, Nolan Sisson from Fort Zumwalt West, our players of the game. You guys are really very good players. I enjoy watching you both play. Thank you. Appreciate that. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're gonna wrap too. Okay, we're wrapping it. So, oh. hey, you guys wanna you wanna say goodbye to the folks? Anybody? See you, man. See you guys. See, you. See, that's it. Bye from the ballpark. Thanks a yeah. lot, fellas. Thank you. Smile for the picture, guys. Thank you. Thank.